everyone. I know it's a bit of a surprise stream. If you're joining us just now, we are going to be doing a very calm drawing stream today. Working on fox side characters. Heck yeah. It's gonna be great. Yeah. Let me just make sure that my stream's working on, on my end as one does. Looks like it is. Hooray. I can hear myself. to turn the music down for me a little bit just because it's pretty loud in my ear even though that might make it hard for folks to hear hi cat on the wall how are you oh no floral you guys up here i'm gonna go back into clip studio paint and you sent me a list of characters so i gotta pull that up putting that up how you guys are saying everyone? You guys are saying help. Oh, it's a help. joke. <laughs> uh, Floral said help and then corrected it to hello, but not before Cat on the Wall had said help as yeah. well. So that's funny. So, Fogscar, Bailey Stock, Chief Strike. Yes. Okay. So, we got are my characters, so I should open up Clan Gen and open up the file for that. Yeah. Real quick, I'll Isn't show. It? I want to show folks some of the designs we already have done, just because they're fun. Mm. At least on my end, before I get started like on the fun. next one. Yeah. Hi, Cave Dweller. Let's see. We got Bo Star, my beloved boy. Um. Apricot. Oh wait, I'm in stage view. I want to be in camera view. Here we go. That's better. Boop. Yay. Uh, Whispering Clan, Storm Clan, Shivering Clan, Mark Clan, Hawk Clan, Hail Clan, Dusk Clan, Day Clan, and Cedar Clan. Oh, we played Foxtide on a different uh, file. Remember how the game like got corrupted and glitchy, and that's where all the good story stuff came from? Yeah. So I just I've just been going to the actual stream. The stream. Yeah, and just screenshotting <laughs> from there to get their okay. designs. That makes total sense. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna have to go do that then. <laughs> that's funny. That is okay. funny. Uh, we're gonna go Let's back see. to YouTube Studio. Oh yeah, here's Mole Moon and his evil ghosty form. Yeah, show off him. all them awesomes. Hello. I can't believe Clan we did Fox Tide that long ago. I know, it's been a whole year, but it doesn't seem that way. Yeah. It feels like yesterday. Okay, Shimmering Throw, Ant Peak, and Fog Scar should be in the beginning section of the game. Hi, Hawk Force. So I apologize for any coughing in the background. Um, that's just my friend who's over. Hello, friend. Got all these lovely old characters. I Z's love them. Shimmering Ant, Fogscar, Bailey Stock, and Chief Strike. Hi, Silly Goose. Hello everyone! I have the lovely princess fur. Two designs I need to work on today are, are her kids. So I've got those to do. Okay, got I more... found Fogscar's old design. If you Perfect. Let me take a screenshot. Oh, it's gonna be nasty to me and make me use snippy instead of the hotkey. Some reason. Just some reason. <laughs> Chat, let me know if um if everything's alright on my end. It should be. We tested a bunch of things. Hi, silly goose and Sophie. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Hi, Oshi Draws! Welcome to stream! Hello! Thank you for coming checking us out! I saw your most recent video, by the way. It was really cool. Now I'm just collecting characters from the beginning of the stream, because... Uh, <laughs> need those designs. We don't have the original file, so I can't just we click do not. through! The game got super glitched and weird. Yeah. Alright. Well, I've got my list. I think first off I need to do... These, these are the ones I'm going to draw today, fellas. I've got Vixen Kit, Wisteria Sight, who I've got a rough sketch for. 
Oh, Wisteria I need to grab her brother Basil Paw's ref. Or his screenshot from Clan Gen. Yeah, uh, Vixen true. Kit's okay. mom. And then if there's time, I have these fellows too. But they're less important because they're not in the first uh, book of Fox Tide. They're in later books. I oh, have I Shimmering Throat. <laughs> Again, I keep using the hotkey to use the snip tool. This is Shimmering Throat Kit woke up like on the wrong before. side of the bed. I think I'm going to do three designs today. I think I'm also going to grab Ant Peak. So I'm going to do Shimmering Throat, Ant Peak, and Fog Scar. Perfect. Those are like the three main Tide Clan folks who are missing. Chief Strike's also like there in the first book, but he's kind of a minor character until later books. So, because he was he was definitely a character who we went back after the stream and said, "Oh man, what if the kitty pet they ran into in the first book was actually this character who's relevant later?" Whoa. Yeah. Hello, KB. Hello, uh, no, welcome to the stream. Right, search, search. Ah, going through my old live stream. <laughs> Bugscar, Elm Kit. Thank God we did these little intros. Right. It made my life so much easier. Except for I didn't do Ant Pelt for some reason. We didn't even know Ant Peak was going to be important until later. We had to just pick random character in Tide Clan to be involved in the coup. <laughs> and and yeah. Ant Peak just happened to be there. There he is. Luckily enough, we sent him on patrol early enough. So those will be my three characters. So Perfect. Arch my thing. Ant Peak. Yeah, my stream is got a little bit more set up. Cause, yeah. Shimmering throat. We like. We like. I do like her markings. I will say. I think I'm gonna have to play with that. And then there's Fog Scar. Right. And then now I can actually put stream on another window. Oh, thank you, Cave Dweller. That's so sweet. Cave Dweller Aww. says that the Nuff Map and and me have played a massive part in giving motivation to draw and animate more. Yeah, we love to hear that. I'm so happy. I'm so happy people are enjoying the nu the mm -hmm. Next Up Forever map. Like that was so much fun and so much work to make. So I'm glad people are enjoying it. Yeah. Yay. Everyone did so good. I think I'm gonna try to design around uh, your design aesthetic because I think that makes the most sense. Yeah. Keep the. I'm excited to see what you do for Shimmer Throat. She has such a pretty yeah, design. Yeah, Shimmer in Throat's Clan gonna Gen. be interesting. Yeah, go go nuts with those markings. Hee hee hee. We don't have to animate these. I, uh, buddy, buddy, don't forget our secret project. That's different than animating, though. <laughs> it's just slightly annoying. I still annoying. have to draw them a thousand times! <laughs> don't you do that to me! Don't Cope. you dare! <laughs> Cope. <laughs> Hi, Eevee Star. <laughs> nah, don't worry. I'm, I won't subject you to... <laughs> Making a million tiny Dalmatian spots on a character or anything. I don't know what to say, like, dude. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm gonna make him a little bit chunky, cause Fog Scar has not been in combat for a very long time. Yeah, fog scars just mean and old. He's just a grumpy old man who totally isn't story relevant for any possible reason. He contributes nothing but bullying. I 
nothing, Bugsy Bug. Nothing at all. It's drawing. It's gone. Oh. <sighs> Oh, so, I'm glad Sophie. Sophie's friend wants to do an animatic with Next Up Forever, the the song. Yeah, that's lo that'll awesome. be lovely. AJR, supremacy. Everyone should do uh, more songs, more projects with AJR music. Yeah. Shimmering throat needs to be Limgen. Let's see if I can fast forward the music here. And I'm I'm like in a. Oh, it's changing. It was in yeah. a, like, part of Pikmin music that was meant to increase anxiety, so you work faster. <laughs> <laughs> the downside of using Pikmin music. Yeah. Oh, I love chubby little, little vixen kit. Nothing bad ever happens to her. Mm -mm. And for those of you who don't know, these characters are from our fir one of our first clan gen streams. And, um, we may or may not have a secret project, which is why we're totally not spoiling it by drawing all these characters that are a year old now. <laughs> I mean, I have a not-secret project, and that's that I'm going to make a video that goes through the whole story, like, story beat by story beat, and involves drawing the characters in little, like, storyboard doodles. So that's, that's the not-secret project mm -hmm. to use these designs for. And it's the only project, clearly. We have no secrets at all. <laughs> no secrets. No thoughts. No particular reason why I don't want to draw a thousand and one dots. <laughs> yeah, of course. No, no, no reason at all. No reason. Oh, that's a, a good squishy baby there. Are you drawing squishy babies? I am. I'm drawing the squishiest baby of Vixen Kit. Ooh. Sophie, your character's name is Disco Tail? I love that. Is that one of the generated names for the, yes, uh, for clan, the game? Oh, that's for clan hilarious. Gym. Right? Disco Tail. Bugsy Bug, um, if you do a Fox Tide animation, I will love you. I will love you so much. Oh, we love Fox Tide fan art. In one of our streams, we actually did a feature of a bunch of different um, Fox Tide characters. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. I'm making him stout. It's a very grumpy old man. He bullies children. Of course he's gonna be grumpy. <laughs> And then three, there we go. Okay. Maybe not beyond his face. <laughs> My eraser tool's all not sized correctly. Give it. There we go. It's been a week since I actually drew anything substantial, so this is a really nice warm up. Warm up. Yeah. I love doing little, little relaxing character designs. Yeah. Well, I've been busy with other things, so I haven't really had a chance to, like... Okay, that looks awful. Um... <laughs> so I haven't actually had a chance to draw. My brain has been in um, a different spot, so this is really nice to be able to draw after... Understandable. After more than... I think I need him to stand, actually. Yeah, he's as much as he's laying down in his thing, maybe I make him standing. I need a thicker brush. I need to build out his anatomy better, because if that's a knack, then I've got a big cat on my hands. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> a shoulder. I like come in. That's looking good, little vixen kit. Gave her a bell on her co on her collar that she doesn't normally have because I think it's cute. Aww. That needs to be a silver bell though. There we go. That's better. I can make him laying down. I just had to change the anatomy. His head was too big for his body. There we go. 
again. Remember, folks, kill your babies while you're designing your characters. That <laughs> way, if you have to change something, you're not attached. Exactly. So I'm gonna make that a little bit lighter, so that it, or a little bit darker, maybe? So it stands out against her fur. That's good. Right, you use regular. Oh characters. man, that's hilarious, Cave Dweller. Oh. Cave Dweller started a new uh, clan gen game after watching our loner challenge with Marsh Clan and Haven Clan. Yeah. And the clan gen generated game name in their clan gen game was Marsh Clan that their clan went against. Ha! Awesome. Marsh Clan supremacy. Let's go! Cougar Fighting. Star will reign forever! <laughs> and her army of children. <laughs> her child soldiers. Classic child soldiers. Yep. Trying to keep to your style. It's gonna be interesting. I'm excited to see how they turn out. I'll have to bring up your stream to see what you're actually drawing and what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you add the eyelids. I'm gonna add those eyelids. Ooh, that's a cool character, Sophie. And hi, Cockatoo. Hey, Bugsy! I found out about Fox Tide over a year ago, and now I feel old. Oh, Foxy, I get that. <laughs> you feel <Yeah>. old. <laughs> I'm surprised we're still making content for it, and yet it's so exciting too, you know? Like... Yeah. I'm happy we maintained that... that excitement, you know? Yeah. The story lives rent-free in my brain. He's a very grouchy old man. <clears throat> oh yeah, the pink ears look better because she's a cute little baby. We like Babu characters. <gasps> Sophie says that... They just subscribed to you! <gasps> Yay! Thank you for subscribing! You'll be excited for what I have coming down the pipeline. I'm working on... Okay, I'm gonna spoil. We're working on a comic of Fox Tide. Yeah! People who watch the stream get to know that. Yeah. We're working on Fox Tide, and I'm also working on my... <laughs> My own series, um, which is Eventide. I've mentioned it a couple times. This one's gonna be different than the animated series we're piloting. This is a comic based in the same universe. Um, and it's about a little cat named Willow who lives uh, with a bunch of old ladies, and it's very cute. There's a fox who is trying to find her own way through the world. She's adorable. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I think you guys will like both, uh, both comics. They are very uh, Bugsy cool. Bugsy says, one of my favorite parts of these streams is flipping between the two streams. That's very sweet, thank you. Tee hee hee. Do you attach the lips? I don't think you do. You don't! Ha! <laughs> Oh, for the Fox Tide comic, Bugsy, it, it's, it's going to be the events in the stream, but a lot of things that weren't in the stream but were there kinda, it's going to be like a, if you go back and watch the streams, it'll be things like 
we'll see an event and it'll be something like, oh look, the river flooded, that's interesting, moving on, because it wasn't relevant in the stream. But then in the actual story, it turned out it was super important. What? Yeah. So it'll put a new perspective on it. Plus, then you get to see all these cool designs in action. Yeah. No, I think I'm really excited for, um... For the, uh... For working on the comic. I gotta pace myself, obviously. I've been really bad at time management lately. Mm -hmm. I haven't had the opportunity to actually sit and work, so this is nice. Yeah. High five, Pebbles. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't. I haven't played Rain World Five Pebbles, so I would not know. Rain World is amazing. If you guys uh, haven't had a chance to play it. Go play it. I ha I own it. I just haven't played it yet. I'm a little <gasps> nervous because I know it's gonna be like hard. And while as much as yeah. I love video games, I'm bad at them. Aww, you can do it, Brooke. <laughs> I believe in you. Thank you. I'm gonna do it one of these days. I hate the way his mouth is. I gotta change that. Alright, I think Vixen Kid is done. She's got a pretty simple design. So, like, honestly, wasn't much... Oh, wait, she needs... I need to put a little paw design for her. Where's a good one I can borrow? I'll just draw a new one. Gotta know what her little paw pads look like. Mm -hmm. Play Monk first for the easier experience. Good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, bad Brooke, video you... games, gang, cave dweller, woo. Have you played uh, Baldur's Gate? Okay, yes and no. I started uh -oh. Baldur's Gate. I have not gotten very far into it because I immediately got overwhelmed by the amount of choices I had. And that also by the thing. fact that I couldn't find Asterion. Oh. I got lost in the opening area and I'm like, I know there's like a handful of characters I'm supposed to find here. And I could I can't find a stair. <laughs> I don't know where he is. Oh but I know he's got like the guy. You barbarian. Um, I don't maybe... I haven't met him yet. I can mispronounce his name. <laughs> <laughs> I think it would be fun if um if we um maybe we do a, a single multiplayer run. Oh, that would be fun. I would enjoy yeah. that, like playing so together. Yeah, because like you have the capture card now, right? Or That's... do you have it on your computer? I have it on my PC, so I can play it anyway. Nice. That would be yeah, super fun Yeah, well, maybe we do a Baldur's. Yeah, maybe we do a Baldur's Gate stream. Oh my gosh! Redesign our characters that. and draw them for the f thumbnail. Yeah. Can you make multiple files in Baldur's yes. Gate? Yes. Okay, good, because I don't want to, even though beauty. I haven't gotten very far into it, I don't want to, like, get rid of the character that I designed for my first Baldur's Gate file. Because I based yeah, him no, off of you... my other D&D character, Froggy the Bear. <laughs> you could make Froggy! I did, I did make Froggy, and I love him. He's so short, because I made him a dwarf, and, like, <laughs> everyone's so much taller than him, and he's just there. It's great. That's amazing. Changes up. Your paw style is so different from mine, and so I'm trying to find a way to like bring that in. I'm gonna have to do a style set of your style. I mean, you can always change paw style. I feel like that's probably one of the least important. I paw. know, but like, Mango your man. designs are so. Mango man. Yeah. My cat is begging for attention. Give him okay, attention. Buddy. All right, brief. I'm gonna use the Light mouse the caps one handed. With attention. To my recollection, Fox Scar Scar Star Scar Brar. He gets a um a wound at one point on his tail, if I remember correctly. So I'm just yeah. gonna incorporate that. Yeah, that could be. That's event an event that happens in the story, but it also seemed a little out of place for like the narrative we were building it could still happen at that point or it could be something it's that he talks about design. constantly as his one yeah. moment of glory of his younger days yeah hey strawberry lemonade and five pebbles i'm sure your art is beautiful in its own way 
Comparison Aww. is the thief of joy. <laughs> Everyone has Starion is amazing, and I am very excited that you want to uh, go find him in your game. I think what would be hilarious, and I think you should absolutely do it, um, is when we do a multiplayer, we each should get attached to one character each. So if you want a Starion, take a Starion, I'll take Gale. Oh, I don't know if, I, if I'm attached to a Starion. I just know that he won, like, the gaming Oscar for his performance. So oh, I wanted yeah, to yeah. make sure that I got him, at the very least for story purposes. The only yeah, one I'm attached to is the fact I know you get a dog and an owl bear, and I need them. That's the only spoiler I've had in my entire purpose of playing Baldur's Gate is to get the dog and the owl there. Oh, you're gonna love Scratch then. Bugsy, seeing the difference seeing the visual difference between Vix and Kit being so cute and fluffy compared to this sharp grump boy is amazing. Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> Alright, now time for Princess Fur's kids. So let me grab Princess Ooh, Fur. Just, uh, Actually I can grab Princess Fur from over here. Actually. Copy. This doesn't look right. I'm gonna fix this. Since it's been a while since I drew anything, I think my uh my drawing form is off. I'm like, Nish! risky. Okay. It's fine. Yeah. You gotta remember, break form. Break form one. Leg in. Right, I actually need to step aside for a second because my cat needs something. But I will be right Keep back to the stream in love. three minutes. So enjoy Galaxy's side of the drawing while I be back. <laughs> yes, watch yeah. me struggle with this old man because his legs won't fit. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Maybe he's got an extra long tail. Yeah, extra long tail. Um, yeah, guys, so you get to see me work on Big Chunky Man here. Um... Simplifying the anatomy has been an interesting challenge for me. I'm very used to drawing um, more realistic anatomy, so for me this has been a fun challenge. Um, I'm not used to it taking this long for me to get a form down. As I said to Rook, though, I think it's because I'm out of practice, so... He's got too big... I'm gonna wrap it around his shoulder, I think, like that. And then he's got a bunch of dots on him, so we're gonna do two loops like that, because that's... Ooh, you know what? We could feed it into his eyebrow like that. <laughs> we like that. And then he's got spots. Oh, cursed are we with spots. <laughs> he looks like he hasn't slept in 50 years. Yes. <laughs> so cursed are we with spots. I think we're going to do the bangle spots, but we're only going to do three because I'm not going to kill my hand drawing spots. It's not happening. I'm going to make them a little triangular so that break that up. And then his tail is striped. So one... Two, three. Ah, uh, no, that's too many. One big. One, two, and three. There we go. Hang that for his markings works because if we go ham, I think we'll have an under uh, a, a shade like that. I think underneath and it goes up until. His chin, I think. And that way it looks like he's got a beard as well, which we... I like. I like bearded cats. Um, so... I'm also here now! Oh, congratulations! Thank you for coming! It looks like he's done everything. Yes, he is... He is a very, very grumpy cat with a very extra long tail. Okay, now that he's mostly done, I'm gonna flip the drawing and watch and cringe in horror. Yes! I cringe in horror. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -da. We're gonna liquefy because that ain't right. His cheeks are all needing pulling. I will say the new updates to the liquefy tool in Clip Studio Paint have been just amazing. It's way more stable. Rain World Gremlin here. Yeah! Rain World is so good. It's a difficult game though. I will say I've, I've definitely had challenges with it. It's gonna have beefier shoulders. Like so thick. Okay, let's flip it back. Much better. Okay. That's better. Alright, and now we're gonna start inking. Do do use the vector tool. 
400 hours plus in Rain World? Damn! That is impressive and wow! I should be writing about instead, beloved artist. Oh, thank you! But you know, like, if you have projects you want to work on, you can always work on them in the background if you don't find us too distracting. All right. That being I'm said, back. oh, welcome back, Rook. Never played Rain World, so I don't know what to think. Oh, it is amazing. It makes me happy and giddy. It's a challenge. It's like a platformer with extra steps. That's how I'll describe it. It's a platformer with extra steps. Welcome back, Rook, by the way. Hello, Snow Kitty, and thank you for welcoming me back. The kitty has been given love. We appreciate you smothering your kitty with love. Yes, he is a very desired smothering love sort of kitty. Yeah. I was watching a YouTube short of this lady whose cat, you know, uh, sleeps alongside her, and this cat just tucks right into her shoulder and elbow, and I'm just like, ah! That's so cute. Ooh, you have 413 hours in Rain World 5 Pebbles? That's crazy. Yeah. So my assessment that a oh, good way to market Rain World as a platformer with extra steps isn't wrong, let's be real. Two, three, simplify that down, that's too big. Me, 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 me. Nope, okay, rounded. Let's see. Let's give. Two, I didn't really like my sketch for Wisteria's site. She is perpetually annoyed. Aww. Like perpetually annoyed kitties. Just a heads up, I have to end stream at around 11. Okay. We got a couple yeah. hours. And so yeah, we got a couple I, hours. We are doing I just figured. Character designs. Yeah. yeah. Just figured I'd need to mention it, because... Yeah! Yeah! He's a very grumpy old man. I think I'm gonna remove some of the wrinkles on his face to focus on his expression. One big loop. Uh... Is there, hold on, um, is there any way to easily access these designs for animating? Oh, well, we could make them into a Google form or a Google Drive thing. Mm-hmm, or make a toy house or something. I've been looking mm -hmm. at, at learning toy house. I could yeah, also put them all up them. on my Kofi gallery, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mango has crawled back onto my chest again. Buddy, I love you. Okay, let's see if I can draw with a cat. With mango I need you, on you? <laughs> I need you to know this is what this looks like right now. Like, I'm sitting in my chair like this. And here's my hand drawing on my drawing tablet. And mango crawled down from the top of my chair and is now <laughs> right here. That's amazing. And I'm like, okay, okay, buddy. That's me. <laughs> ah, yes, that is a great, a great loophole, cave dweller. <laughs> okay, Mango, do you wanna hop down? Do you wanna hop down? You want some? Ooh, congrats. Hey, I'm gonna put up light gem. Let's see what I get. Yeah, yeah, cool. I'm live right now. By you the like way. all the uh, fox side characters, Bugsy? Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate that you enjoy our hard work, mainly Rook's hard work. Your hard work too. Gosh. It's mainly you, but it's mainly you. Oh yeah, let's give her her mom's face shapes, but like wider. Yeah, I like that. Look at her. She's so mad. Giving the kitty the mad face. Mm 
trying to really exaggerate the slope of his shoulder because, like, he's muscular under there, right? But he's also old, so it's like his muscles have relaxed with time. Yeah. And then he's turned into a child bully because he's an awful character. Yes, he has no no love in his heart. No, he has given up on caring about others. So much to the extent that he pushes poor Nakray Kit to do, oh, Nakray Pelt at that point, to do some some troubling behavior. Indeed. Poor Nakray. She is amazing. Sorry. She is. I love her so much. I know. She's so cool. One, two, three, one. Pixel art is awesome, Cave Dweller. Yeah. His muscles have relaxed, but he hasn't. <laughs> nice. Yeah. I want to make right. sure she looks distinct, especially from Apricot Tail, who yes. she will be at the throat of. Not literally, just generally, because she hates her. And Apricot Tail hates her too. She thinks she's dumb. Yeah. No patience for the stupid. Or so Very she nice. thinks. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Alright, and she's got just a stripe that goes down her back to her tail, which is just a dark color, which is nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoulder swipes, you are an animator's best friend. Why am I doing this in red? So that when I color, I don't have to think too hard. I can just delete these lines when I'm done. So it occurs to me, Rook, mm -hmm. when we do make the comic, where do you think we should make it available? Oh, yeah, that's a great question. And and that's sort of where I think it's important we ask our uh, watchers, because what platforms do you prefer to read webcomics on? Yeah, folks, well, what do you read webcomics on? I know personally I read comics on Webtoons or Tapas. Which tapas would work better for, like, having comics that are print-shaped so we could print books eventually. But Webtoons has, I feel like, more reach. Yeah, the question is, is would we be allowed to do print? Because it's a derivative property. Mmm, true. Much as that could be fun. Hmm. We should look into the copyright laws for that. Yeah. Sophie reads on tapas. Nice tapas. Okay. Well, maybe we'll look into we tapas always, and figure out. The we best could always do there. the the trick that uh, an old comic artist friend of mine would do, because uh, mm -hmm. he did comics back in like the '80s and stuff. And he told oh, yeah? me because I asked him, I I had asked him the same question because I was making Pokemon comics back in the day, and I was like, haha, I can't sell them. I just like making them, but I can't sell them because you know copyright. Oh yeah, Nazarok. Yeah. And he told me, uh, he's like, no, 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 here's what you do. You sell art commissions, you sell sketches, and you're like, would you like to, to buy a $30 sketch? And <laughs> oh no, I have no free paper available except the front cut ins insert page on this comic book. 
So I'll just do the sketch on the inside of the book, and then you just, oh well, you have to take the rest of the book too, and it's priced as if it's for the whole book. Oh well. Oh my god, that's <laughs> amazing. I love that. That's just criminal. I don't know how much that would hold up in like a court of law, but I freaking yeah. love, love it. That's amazing though. Advice from James A. Owen. He also wrote a bunch of fantasy books. Cool, cool guy. Oh, really? I'll have yeah. to check out his work. Yeah. We do shout out to you, buddies. <laughs> the world is not beyond us, it is our oyster. Let's see. Bugsy says they prefer to read on, read comics on anything except Instagram, Facebook, since those are really hard to read in order. Which is actually Yeah, fair. no worries. We will not be using Facebook, I think. I mean, I do like... I also read webcomics on uh, an Instagram. An ancient platform left to the relics of time. Ah, yes. I do, I do personally read comics on Instagram still. Mostly when it's one that's, like, actively updating, so I can just follow and get the, the new pages when they arrive. But it is hard to, like, go back and read old pages. OBS disconnected? No! Oh! <gasps> Reconnected. Hello, everyone! OBS disconnected. But we're back now! Oh, good. Um, and Cave Dweller says that they read comics on Tapas, Tumblr, and Comic Fury. Mm. Okay, noted. These guys. Yeah, bigger. well, having multi platforms makes the most sense. I wonder, like, I doubt we could definitely, I doubt we could do it on Amazon Kindle. You know what I mean? Like, that, yeah. I think. That seems a little bit sketch. Yeah. As but far as the legality. It occurs to me. Yeah. Well, what we could do, if we're cheeky about it, nah, it would still count, never mind. I was about to say, people could print it on their own. Hardy har har. <laughs> yeah, I think I need to practice your style a bit more, because his nose is just too small. <laughs> Here, I can pull up your stream if you want. I can take a look and see what rook rookiness is missing. Hey, everyone! Oh, that looks gorgeous! <gasps> Fox Scar! I love yeah, it. I think we're... his nose is a great size. I don't think so. I think I, think I need to elongate his nose. But beyond yeah. that, that's, that's, that's how he's going. Yeah! I'm thinking of creating a stripe and then a loop around his back legs so that his legs don't look as chickeny. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Oh. It's taking me a bit longer, but that's okay. Self conscious because I haven't drawn in a while, and the first time I start drawing, it's on stream! <laughs> I'll Just okay. good to know, even your favorite artists are human and have to practice. Yeah. And get rested. That's better. Mm. You are now humanized and will be even more loved for it. I hope so. <laughs> he did look weird without a nose. Hi, and Scarlet! How do I draw cat paws from the front? Yeah, paw. Um, look up references, man. That's the best I can offer you. Um, but they're basically like boxes, each toe. I draw it as a hot, as a, a hot dog with uh, two lines drawn on it. Like a fat little hot dog. They're like a weird box shape. So like, each toe kind of looks from the front. Looking with like, a weird box shape like that. And then usually I'm like a... It's usually my front paw base. Anyway. <clears throat> yeah.
I love, like, girl characters with massive, massive eyebrows. That's one of my favorite design things to do. It brings me such joy. We appreciate the joy it brings, and also... Not there we go. It was years for that. And then his skin tone make like a very desaturated. Yeah, there we go. Alright, I think he's done. Woo! He was a very, very grumpy man. We love a grumpy man. I should do your little paw character sheet base. Hold on, let me find the character sheet bases you've got going. Have you shown off the designs that you already did? For like Some of them, and... yeah. Mock kit and neon? Yay. Oh, did I show mock kit and neon? I don't know if I showed that one. Jewel Stripe. Look at little baby Mock Kitty, so cute. <laughs> we appreciate the Babus here. Are you talking about eyebrows or are you talking about eyelashes, Bugsy? Because I've seen that where, like, only girl characters have eyelashes and the boy characters don't, and that's annoying because everyone has eyelashes. I don't know if I've ever seen only the girls having eyebrows and the guys not. Although I, I kind of find that funny and I'd like to do that. It's like, <laughs> here's your, your girl cat, you know, so expressive, full of emotion. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, classic man. <laughs> <laughs> Classic man, man and woman genders. <laughs> genders. The, there's only la, 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 there's la. the two genders, uh, the horrors and DreamWorks face. <laughs> it makes me think of like um Ice Age. <laughs> There we go, now it's a DreamWorks space. <laughs> I like to use eyelashes sometimes. Mostly I don't, but every once in a while I'll toss them in. Like, Princess Fur has eyelashes, or like Cloverfin, I gave him little eyelash, like, eye corners, because I feel like it really brought his design together. Just that touch, touch of just that touch of femininity to know that he's not toxic. Just the tiniest toxic. bit. I'm slipping under tears of the poison paradise. Hey, dreamer. And that's how I end up getting copyrighted. <laughs> Face Shazam, you singing it. <laughs> yep. Some back legs. I'm gonna attach it to the stripe on the butt. Legs go like that. Exactly, Cave Dweller, exactly. Bye, Bugsy! Bye, Bugs! Thank you for coming! You're amazing, and we appreciate you every time! Yay! I'm doing the, the spread out pelt you did at the fur tool stripe. Ooh. Where he looks this. like a rug at the top. I just gotta have like your stream up and playing. Oh yeah, yeah, the, the rug so you can see what he looks like from the top. It's very helpful. Yeah. I have not seen Has Been Hotel, Sophie. It's like, worth a watch. I've heard that. I've heard it's very good. I watched I think, most of Hell of a Boss, but I haven't watched Has Been Hotel. I, there are definitely issues, and it would be a crime not to, to, to warn you that there are definitely, like, as animator, I think you'll notice them. 
Um, Fair. <laughs> but it is a good show. You know? Yeah. And I'm, I'm just so. appreciative of, like, the branching out of indie animation to having a wider reach so that weirder and more varietyed projects can happen for people to enjoy. Like our stuff. What? Nothing. My music has stopped. What has happened? I can appreciate how much people are, like, enjoying uh, Has Been Hotel and stuff. Yeah. You know? Like, it's lovely to see people, like, excited. Yeah, like that's that. true. That's something I think, um, uh, criti criticism is important, but it's also important to acknowledge, like, it's just fun to enjoy something. Yeah. You know? I also, I'm extremely happy that like, well not extremely happy, I am happy mm. that the designs are so wildly, like, designed. Like there's so many bits and bobs and spots and stripes and like that's so but much- But I feel that's... so bad for the animators! Exactly, exactly, but I think sometimes it's worth it and I feel like so much animation nowadays shies away from interesting character design in lieu that of smooth true. shapes and no interruption for ease of animation. And I would yeah. like there to be more variety. So seeing variety makes me happy. That is a definite consideration, actually. You know what? That's fair. Yeah. But not, like, all the time everything. I don't want every show to start becoming that much design because then, yes, I cry <gasps> for the animators. Ugh, I still cry for the animators. I will say, like, I think Husker's design could definitely have used some simplification. Mm-hmm. That's the, the um, cat with wings, right? Yeah, he's the cat with wings. The one that sings, uh, you're a loser. Yes. And has a really deep voice. Yes. That's all I know about You Husker will notice <laughs> during the singing segment how his design shifts. It's sad, actually. I feel bad that, um... Like, I wish it wasn't a legitimate, um, critique, you know? Um, but it is, so. Yeah. Which is fair. I mean, Showtune Cockatoo just said, I don't think enjoying something and criticizing it are mutually exclusive. We are Warrior fans, true. after all. <laughs> that, is that is true. Very if Warrior accurate. fans know anything, <laughs> it's we can critique the crap out of something and still love it. It's true. I love Warriors with all my heart and soul, and I also criticize it. Ruthlessly. <laughs> I criticize Warriors the same way I would criticize my child if I had a child, where I'm like, I love you. I will always love you. You will never not earn my love. However- But you were a menace. I need you to improve in certain areas, and we're gonna work on that together. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that would be my parenting if I were Warrior's mom. <laughs> if I could rewrite Warriors, how would it go? That's a question I've always asked myself is am I talented enough in writing or skilled enough I should say in writing to be able to like affect that kind of change, the changes I want to see in the books in a way that's satisfying, you know? Yeah. I think Definitely, like, the, the weaknesses in the books are not due to the lack of skill on the writers. Because I've read, the, like, all of the Aaron Hunter's work, like, separate from Warriors, and they've got some great stuff, like, on their own. It's 100% the publishers, like, pushing, pushing that they keep writing these books and probably not giving them enough time to do so, and they don't communicate with each other that much in between books and they can't choose which books they get to write so they end up with drop plot holes all over the place yeah and it's not their fault they are a victim of capitalism oh the pain that comes with that <laughs> so many projects are just ruined by trying to push the product out mm-hmm mm-hmm very very true and so it's really painful to, you know, um, I think he's done. Um, 
to see and hear and struggle with that, you know? Yeah. That, like, like that's something I worry about is if I ever end up making my own show, right? Like, yeah. say Even Tide gets syndicated for whatever reason. You know, luck be the stars. And it got picked up by something like Netflix. I wonder how much creative control would I still have on the project? Oh, I actually have an answer for that. It depends. Because um, I worked on a show that was picked up by Netflix. Oh, you did? Yeah. It was a preschool show, but still. Yeah. Um, and the way it worked is, like, we had pretty free-form creative control at the early stages in terms of, like, writing out the episodes and storyboarding, etc. Um, mm -hmm. But then Netflix would need to watch the episode and they would have notes. You know, and so the Netflix executives would be like, oh, we like this, but we would like this to be different. And because it was preschool, it was a little bit, like, honestly, most of the notes were not that, like, huge. Because, yeah. like, it was for preschool. And even though we cared deeply about it, like, <laughs> it's yeah. for preschool. Yeah. Yeah. And Ooh, so, you know, then we would go back, make adjustments, and then send it around to get approval and then get animated and stuff. That makes so, sense. So you definitely would, if you got picked up by Netflix, I'm sure that they would have, like, notes, and you would either have to go to bat for them and, like, really, like, plead your case of, like, no, no, it really needs to be this way. Mm -hmm. Which, one of my, the episode that I wrote was like that. There was one joke in it that me and my director really went to bat for. Because we were like, I know it's a weird joke, but trust me, it's funny. It's really, really good, and it's really funny, and the audience will get it. You have to trust us. And then I got laid off not long after that due to COVID, and so I was unable to be there to plead my case, and the joke did get removed, sadly. Oh. That so it sucks. Lives... I didn't know you had done that, though. That's yeah. That's cool to know. Yeah. It's uh, for Go Go Corey Carson. I wrote one of the shorts, which <laughs> the joke in question, because the whole, the episode I wrote was a, um, oh, what's it was the premise was that like the little sister character on the show found an old camcorder and was watching like home movies on it. Mm -hmm. um, old, and then like the last home movie she finds is the movie of when she came home as a baby and it's very sweet. Um, but one of the jokes was based very directly off of one of my own home movies, which I think is so freaking hilarious because it's my dad filming at the beach. And he's just, like, filming, like, like my siblings splashing around in the water, and then the camera pans over to me just sitting on the sand, like, picking at the sand, and I look up at the camera and go, Look at this. There's dozens of shells and hundreds of coral. And then I just smile really, like, like at the camera, just like, ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, that is amazing. It's just Terrible really funny. It's so out of context. And we did this, like, great... So we did a variation of that where, like, the dad character in the show was filming, like, the mom and daughter playing with a beach ball. And then it pans over to see the little boy character in the distance poking at the sand. And he looks up and goes, Look at this. There's hundreds of shells and dozens of coral. <laughs> and it was and just, like, he's so, so small. He's so it's small really and cute. it's so cute and so much. I think that was the problem, though. It was so it was meant to be funny because kids are stupid and cute, you know. Yeah. And it's like kids say weird things that don't fully make sense, and that's hilarious to parents. Yeah, they just but, say random stuff. Exactly, and so it was meant to be a joke, but for the for like the executives and stuff. And for the other directors, it felt too much like it was just a cute moment. Like, oh, look at how cute the character's being. It's like, no, 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 he's being hilarious. <laughs> you have to understand. <laughs> yeah. So, sadly, it didn't make the cut, but it is still in my version of the storyboards on my portfolio Ooh. site. So it lives that's on forever awesome. there. That's awesome. Well, it's neat to know that that's how Netflix does it, you know? Yeah, or at least that's how they did it with the show that I was on. It might work differently for other yeah. shows, but yeah. 
Kids are like funny aliens sometimes, Dreamer. Right, okay, Shimmer Throat, you gotta look. This needs to be a little you bit lighter. You balls, because you are adorable! Yes, look at her design. Oh, I love her so much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yes, yes. He looks so grumpy. He did! Hi, Yara, also, and Maria. Hey, Misty. Oh, Chubby Chubby. That's usually the way it is with a lot of shows, too, though, is that you'll have, like, great ideas, but they'll end up on the cutting room floor. And most mm -hmm. of the time, that's out of necessity. And usually stuff ends up for the better for it. Yeah, you usually. You gotta trust, trust the process. Yeah. Do you want to know my a... favorite uh, joke that got changed in the show? Like, oh? that ended up being way funnier for it? Yeah, go ahead. So, like, it's for preschool, right? Yeah. But we're all a bunch of adults working on it. We were making the show to be funny to us. as Because we were just having a good time. Yeah. So there was a, a friend of mine on the show whose entire job was to sit in on meetings and remind us that the target demographic was three-year-olds. Um, <laughs> to be yeah. like, this is really funny, guys, but this is for three-year-olds. <laughs> too funny what are you doing yeah and yeah like remind us like no you can't do this it's imitatable blah 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 and so <laughs> in one of the episodes there's a joke where the the whole episode is about one of the like kid characters being helpful and then getting a big head about being like everyone needs my help i'm like a superhero everyone gives me all this attention it's great you know yeah so there's a a joke earlier on where she's pl she's playing at the park and the this older kid comes running over because there were these two older kid brothers that were like mm -hmm. meatheads on the show it was great and he runs over and goes help help my my brother and I our frisbee got stuck in the tree and my brother went after it and now he's stuck in the tree and it whip pans over to the tree with like him sticking out the top of it going oh no bro Oh no, bro! Um, so it was very funny. Um, yeah. But then we, when we like did the pitch meeting to go over the joke, it was like, no, this is imitatable. We don't want kids repeat like mimicking yeah, this we're... joke and getting stuck in trees. So we had to change the joke that would somehow. Be hilarious! I know. Also... It would be so funny, but it ended up being even funnier. So how do you fix this? Well, it's fun. It's not okay if children are the ones doing it in the show because it's imita imitatable. But if you have an adult do it, it's oh, fine. Oh no! So now the new chain, the the joke got changed by my brilliant friend Tyler Hendricks, who's very very funny, and this this was his episode, so very funny. Yeah. Um, and the second version of the joke that did end up in the final, um, meathead kid comes running over. Help! Help! Our frisbee got stuck on the roof, so we sent this old guy to get it, and now he's stuck on the roof, and then it pans over to a house with, like, an elderly man sitting on top of it going, How did I get here? Oh, <laughs> better. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I love that. So it ended up being even funnier, because, like, it's an old man on the roof. Old man on the roof. Oh my god, that's amazing! So yeah, sometimes when you're, especially when you're collaborating with other people, trust the process and it'll it'll turn out all the better for it. Yeah. Oh, and Dreamer. Dreamer asked, what are my thoughts on Bluey? I friggin' love Bluey. Like, Bluey's amazing. We referenced Bluey on our show when I was working on it. And that was before That's it blew awesome. up in America. That was the first place I heard it was it came up in like pitch meetings all the time of like, okay, Bluey did this. What if we did something like this? Because Bluey was like the gold standard of preschool to, to live up to. Yeah. And I, and I was like, what the heck is Bluey? And then I watched it and it's a freaking masterpiece. And I will like watch episodes of Bluey and cry because of how incredibly geniusly well-written they are. It's amazing. Like, 
as a kid show goes, it did not have to go that hard. It's true, but also, like, you do not realize how hard it is to write something in seven minutes. Yeah. That's, like, that's a lot. I remember when I was working on my episode, I would watch an episode of Bluey for reference. And, like, in my episode, I only had seven minutes to establish all this stuff. And so I had, like, the first shot of the episode, the first, like, ten seconds, I had to establish what the characters were doing, where they were. I had to establish the existence of a camcorder, the existence of the home movies. I had to ha establish that mom wanted to clean, but the daughter wanted to play. Like, and I had to do all of that within, like, five seconds. Really? And yeah, five I, seconds. Well, like I think five seconds is a little bit. Um, it was more like ten seconds. Because the thing okay. was, I wanted to show the home movies. I wanted to show yeah. a montage of home movies, which meant that that's where the time in seven minutes needed to go. So I had yeah. very, very little time at the start to establish all the necessary things to get us there. And then I'll watch things like Bluey, and it'll establish things within the first like scene that are just so artfully and perfectly set up that it's just like oh my gosh this is a how did you craft this how did you do this like it's so like flat pack oh my gosh yeah insane insane there's so much happening in flat pack that they establish so quickly and then they're already moving on to like the actual point of the episode and everything is paged so beautifully to then all come together at the end it's like how did you do this in seven minutes well that's really cool to know like that because as you know i want to break into the studio gigs if i can eventually yeah, yeah. I'm not a trained professional yet. <laughs> I have the skills. I just, uh... Getting into studio work's really hard right now for everyone. It is. It is. The industry's like, really struggling. Even if you already struggling. have experience. I have a friend of mine who's been an animator veteran for like the last ten years. Mm-hmm. Like, he worked on Thomas the Tran Tank Engine and some other larger properties, right? Mm -hmm, He's worked mm -hmm. for Nickelodeon and, you know, like, he can't find work. Oh, yeah. It is nuts out there for animation right now. It is so hard to find yeah. work. I, and I think a huge part of that <laughs> is just Netflix canceling a bunch of shows, and same with DreamWorks and um, Warner Brothers. Yeah, there's a big bubble popping right now <coughs> from all the streaming services, as now that there's more streaming services, obviously the bigger ones are losing money to people just subscribing to other things and they're panicking and canceling projects left and right to try to keep their record profits which is not a great way to go and no then also the whole ai thing like storyboarding jobs and other jobs are getting cut left and right because they're trying to replace them with ai which is ridiculous because it's ai nice. can barely discern proper angles and perspective it's true it's very silly Picks, my friend. Welcome to the stream, briefly, Picks. We love you. I'm doing my best to emulate Rook style. Hehehe. <laughs> it's been fun. I think, I think you're gonna like Shimmer Throat. Oh, oh, I've got your stream up on another window and I'm already excited. Yeah, I'm planning out her markings. I'm gonna give that, you know how she's got that orange stripe that goes through her face like that? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna make it an L shape. Ooh, I love that. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, show tune? But yeah, I would look. It's it's a whole deal. It's rough in the industry right now, but it'll pull through. We'll find work. We'll break yeah. in. We'll cool shows will get made. Well, Maybe indie shows. Well, and that's the thing is, is like with Haspen Hotel and Hell of a Boss, and even um that dinosaur that show that came out. Like indie Primal? started projects yeah. are on the rise for obvious reasons. Yep. 
you know? And, and I hope it would be interesting to see if we could get our stuff off the ground, you know? Yeah. I believe in us. I think so, too. You know, I don't think we could market Fox Tide, but if I can get Even Tide, go- <laughs> I love how <laughs> Even Tide. That was coincidental, by the way, everyone. Um, Fox Tide was not named after Even Tide, and Even Tide was not named after Fox Tide. They happened separately, which is very yeah. funny. Yeah. Even Tide's a bit of um, like I'm I, like I'm treating the comic seriously, but the animated show, it's kind of like. It's, it's gonna be good. I gotta be careful what I say on that one, actually, so. Because yeah. the show, if it ends up getting picked up, I wanna... Stay true to the image Lou, uh, Lou, 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 Lou and I had. Yeah. Uh. I would like indie Ooh. stuff to start getting good budgets. Yeah, um, budget pay traffic. Pay the peeps, please. Yeah. I would like everyone to get paid well for their work. Yeah, well that's the hard part, right? Is is that, like, there's a lot of excuses for execs to not pay animators. Oh, ain't that the right truth. wage. Wisteria It's kind of sad, really. It really is. Because it doesn't have to be that way. Nope, it does not. There's enough money in the industry to afford it, it's just producers being jerks. Mm. It really is. It comes yep. down to that. Yep. I hope things look up soon. Yeah. Support independent creators, I guess, is our message today. Yeah. And go watch Go Go Cory Carson on Netflix. <laughs> go support the sh mech we get hired to do. Yeah. It may it may not be as ma much of a masterpiece as Bluey, but it's pretty dang close in my personal opinion. It's very Aww. funny. Oh Rook, you're so sweet. <laughs> Right, Wisteria site's almost done. Ooh, Love we her. appreciate Wisteria. I like this color. Hey, Rusty. Uh, how much you take to finish a one-minute video? Uh, <laughs> are you talking about time or money? Because time Cause... depends. I know it took me like a year and a half to storyboard. Uh, next up forever. But that, but I've also storyboarded like the God Help the Outcasts animatic. I storyboarded in like a single week. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it really depends. Oh, thanks, Butter. Butter says we're such an inspiration for artists. Oh, thank you. That's really sweet. I know that out there right now it, it's easy to get disheartened about what you're working on, but the reality is is it's always worth looking into and figuring out. Yeah. Because you never know what you actually end up doing. It's true. <laughs> Thanks, Fix. Okay. I think I simplified her design. Ooh, let me see. And forgot Zoom that out. Clip Studio Paint is in vector based. Oh. oh, her design is so pretty. Yeah, she's cute. Oh, what I a good mama. Yeah. She's a good adopted mama. Okay, I'm gonna have to fix that, but for now, that's what I'm going with, I think, for the face markings is this L shape. In the design, it has 
I will say, what I like about the the generated thumbnail for her character is she has this, like, divot that goes around like that. And I do like that, so. Her design, I think I'm gonna have to tweak a bit more, but for her head, I think that's a really cute shape. And I think I like she's it. adorable, so she deserves it. She is she adorable, and she nose. does deserve it. She's getting a purple nose. Heck yeah. yeah. So, next question is... Ugh. Making this repeatable. Yeah, Dreamer, go okay. for it. The thing about, like, making always... decisions about, like, out of doubt or fear is there's always the thought of, like, well, what if it goes wrong? Well, the answer, you know, what if it goes right? You know? They yeah. only want, if there's a path in life that you want, then do go towards the direction that that path exists on. Yeah. Well, and, like, don't be afraid to ask for criticism, critique, or feedback, right? Like, oh, heck yeah. if you feel like your product is an, product idea or story needs work, ask people who are confident and comfortable talking to you about it. Yeah. Because then you can improve stuff, like the one joke in Gogo Cory Carson. Yeah. It does not have to be a one or the other, you know? Heck yeah. Oh, and Butter, what prob what program do I use to animate? I am a heathen that uses Storyboard you Pro to animate. <laughs> you so, are a heathen in the worst type of way. I use a storyboard program to animate by making the storyboards it's ridiculous. really short. It's really ridiculous. You use clips you use sorry um, storyboard pro to animate. It it doesn't have really good functionalities for, you know, properly going through and editing frames and adding keyframes. No, no. Rook Brute forces this stuff. I do. I do. And I have a lot of fun doing it. Wanna it's see awful. Want to see a rough animation I just finished for Repeat Until Death? Oh my gosh. Okay, hold on. I'll go pull up your stream and cry with everyone. <laughs> Let me boot up the other storyboard profile and... Pro... Profile. Well, one You're gonna sec. make me cry, Rook. You're gonna make me cry. I will. I am so happy with that. He's gonna make me cry. It's it's fine. I can I can just cry. That's all. All right. I've pulled up go. your your stream. Show me the horrors. All right. Let me pause my music real quick, since this has its own music. Which, just so you can see, uh, this is this is how I animate on the bottom here. <laughs> so these, see, these this are normal is not storyboard how size. You animate. This is what I animate with down here. It's just very short storyboards. They're just but, panels. Yes, they're just very tiny panels. It's ridiculous, guys. I love you, Rook. Mm -hmm. But don't set a bad standard for the kitties. No, kitties, animate with whatever you want. Use a hammer and cheese. I don't care. You can do anything. Hammer and cheese. But no, seriously, like, Rook, it breaks my brain that you do this in Storyboard Pro. <laughs> like, I think about timing charts and, like, like and, and sheets and just, like, how do you do it? It just breaks my brain every time. I don't know. It just makes sense to my brain that like, I want if I want to know how long a frame exists, it's right there. I can change the length or not, and it's got a, a it's got an onion skin tool, you know. I can time it to the music below. Where's the issue? Oh, don't have the pure white background. It's bad for eye strain. That's good to know. I might yeah. change that. I might not. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, right. But yeah, rip, guys, rip so my this eyes. is Rook. Rook brute forces everything, and it's amazing, and yet horrifying to me. Yes. And that's the animation. It'll be finished and in the repeat until Dream death Seeker says, map me eventually. on my way to buy Storyboard Pro, the best animation program. <laughs> <laughs> it is not the best animation program, but really you can not. do just about anything with it if you don't have standards and have patience. 
<laughs> so if you if you really put your mind to it, you can make any soft work. I know back when I was a kid and I first started learning how to animate, I did um, GIMP with a um, with a plugin to be able to view the animation, and then I would use Caden Live, which is for Linux, because I used to have a have a, a machine running what would have been Wheezy at the time as the operating system. Mm. So. That, my, yeah. my first animation software was Windows Movie Maker and MS Paint. Yeah. That's probably why Scoreboard got... Pro appeals to me, is because it functions very similar to lead to flipbook animating in <laughs> Windows Movie Maker. <laughs> You're not wrong. Oh my god, I didn't even catch that overlap. Me but you're neither. right. The way Me you neither. put in the panels is the same way you it's... <laughs> Yep, yep. Oh my poor I brain am... can't take that. I have never outgrown my my earliest stages, apparently. Okay, let's see. Hi Pokey Dragons. I need to find I forgot to grab the uh reference for um for Basil Paw. Where's where's Bas Basil Paw, baby? Give me a Bab Basil Paw. Babble. Babble Paw. No, that would be a cute name. Okay, looks like he hasn't joined the clan yet at that point. Uh, oh, right. He was like a little white and ginger kit. Let's see if I can get him before he, when he's like a Apprentice, though. I have the the stream open. The stream open in my other uh, window just to look at character designs in Clan Gen. Normally, I don't draw this hairily, but I'm not a hundred percent certain on these shapes. Hmm. Basil Paul, where are you? Oh, he had a. His, his design was actually way harder to see when he was an apprentice because he was doing the lying on his back pose. So we're going to oh, go with the kid, yeah. the kid example. Oh, yeah. He's an adult to get that design. Well, he actually died what before he was an adult, so the kit, oh, I yeah. think, design is all I've got. Oh, snap, right. Uh, uh, Dream worry, Seeker buddy. says, what does Galaxy Mew use to animate? I use a combination of softwares because I'm flexible and I want to make sure that whenever I get a job, I'm able to animate in the software that they want me to. Uh, but for my own stuff, I use Toon Boom and Clip Studio Paint. And with the new update to Clip Studio Paint, now I can actually scrub audio in my draft. So I usually use Clip Studio Paint for drafts because I have access to like the best perspective tools that I have ever seen in any software. Um, the perspective grid in this is just mwah. Um oh, And then when I do tools. clean up, I use Toon Boom. That's a good. That's a good pipeline. That's good stuff. Yeah, because like in Toon Boom, there's the auto color feature for when you want to fill in one color. And so you can just color all your frames in one click. It's incredible. Um, you still have to go in and do the finer details. And uh, one hot tip I learned while working on a indie project was um, uh, when you go through the drawing tools, make sure you uh, clean up drawing. Uh, it's a tool that allows you to connect loose ends in the vector art because Toon Boom uses vectors. It's actually why Rook's work always looks amazing. It's because it's always a vector layer. That's another reason why I use raster. Storyboard Pro is because I like vectors so much and it has a very yeah. intuitive manipulate vectors system. Yeah. Well, and Clip Studio Paint is catching up that way, by the way. Like, here, I'm going to be using... Here, I'm going to use a vector layer as an example here, and I'm going to increase my brush size. This is a completely textured brush. Let's grab a fine soft brush. You can see it works with any of the textured brushes, um, unlike other vector softwares. And Toon Boom, you can use the textured brushes. It's just, it's not as cohesive, see right? See um, Like, here, there's that. And then in vector, you because it's made of mathematical points, um, you can see I can move parts of the line art around as needed or smooth it out or reduce points. And then what you can also do, and this is 
available in both Toon Boom and Clip, or in Toon Boom and Storyboard Pro, but it's not as intuitive, is the increased brush size tool. You can see I can make some very dynamic line art just with this tool. I don't actually have to redraw the line at all. Nice. Yeah. Clip Studio Paint might... Like, if Clip Studio Paint can get the same colorized features that Toon Boom has, then it might become my default. But it's also not as robust as Toon Boom, so... You've got to play with what you got. It's true. I also say in terms of coloring, like... It's gonna be a real dick. Sorry, jerk. <laughs> my apologies. Um, so yeah. I don't know... I'm gonna have to play with her design more when I can. I think I'm designed out. <laughs> I'm getting tired. I think it's uh time for me to go eat breakfast. Oh, you're gonna <laughs> so hop out? I think out? I'm gonna have to end soon. I was gonna go to 11, but I think I gotta get ready for the day. Probably smart. If you don't mind, Rook. No, no worries. I might hang on and and finish uh, Basil Paw and Baby Pounce before I sign off. Yeah. Well, I'll stay with you and call and do other things, but I think I'm done drawing. <laughs> Very fair. As Very I fair. said, this was a warm-up for me because I haven't drawn in a week. So, I think I'd like to take a crack at doing some practice sketches before I come back and do more. Yeah. Mm, I know we're doing it. Mm. Oh my goodness, I'm tired. Mm. Oh my god, yes, those pointy ears were adorable. They look like... Did you... They look like cherry blossoms! Yeah! All three of them yeah. have them. They are a family. Yeah! Yeah, I'm gonna end stream, but I'll still be in call for a little bit before I end. Sweet. Thank you guys on my end. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Oh. The stream has ended on my side, and now I'm just a voice in Rook's chat. Yeah. Also means I can turn off my music. Let's see, little... Little Basil what Paw over here. Let's scooch him over there so it's easier to see. Yeah. I'm He's a sweetie. Draw while I can. Yeah. Oh yeah, and Rook's got some, uh... Some adoptables coming up, you guys, if you haven't heard about that yet. Yeah, I haven't finished them yet. I put a test one up yesterday, and it's and uh, t someone, a friend of mine, bought it, which was lovely. Oh, um, yeah, oh. but I'm gonna I'm gonna make some more, more character designs like these guys that will be for sale if y'all want them, and it helps support me doing art. Yeah. do what we do without your guys' support. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I like giving him... I think I might make his tail a little bit... like, wider, Oop. maybe? It's but a poofy like, round the, boy. Get the swirl to you it so could, he matches his mom. You could make his tail match his ears. Mm, that's not a bad idea. Play with that sort of symmetry and design, right? So, like, instead of having it round, make it like a two point. So, instead of it being round, mm -hmm. basically take the ear shape, right? And draw it as the tail. So it's short, but like, yeah. I see that. And giving him a short tail does, like, help. Yeah. I think it pulls him. together the shapes. Yeah, that's cute. I like that. Okay, so then I'm gonna give him a little So cute! Oh my god, you broke my brain. Two lines and you broke my brain. How did I how did I break your brain? A detail I love is that Galaxy Sprite has top fangs and Rook's design has bottom fangs. Oh that is cute! Between us, we have a full mouth of teeth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dreamer Seeker says Have either of you ever thought about selling prints or merch of your art? 
I actually attend markets in my local area where I sell, um, because I have a sublimation printer, I make pillows, cups, and all sorts of little knickknacks. I haven't nice. advertised them online yet, though, because a lot of them are Pokemon, and Nintendo doesn't like fan artists. <laughs> yeah, I used to do, like, the, the anime convention circuit a little bit, um, so I used to sell lots of prints of my art. When I got into, when I started doing more animation and stuff, I lost, I didn't have time for that, and I haven't quite, like, gotten back into that since I keep trying to find storyboard gigs. Yeah. You know, but who knows? Well, hey, you know what? If we both want to launch, you know, our own little merch section, that wouldn't be not bad. I mean, but then I'd have to mail stuff, and oh, oh, the taxes man. are going to be annoying, because American taxes are so annoying. Taxes are a thing. <sighs> Yeah, and Nintendo L, right? If I were to sell like, anything online, it would probably be stickers, just to keep it easy, you know? Stickers are fun. I actually have a Cricut and a Silhouette. Well, between the two, Silhouette's better. Just full stop. It doesn't handhold you like a baby. But the problem is, mechanically, they can be a bit janky. Um... So, tomato, tomato, I guess. Um, and making my own stickers has been quite profitable good. When I go to markets, I sell them for $2 each, which is cheaper than the other people who get them ordered from Sticker Mule or, you know, another sticker printing site. Yeah. But because mine are handmade, I can, like, my overhead cost for each sticker is probably about five cents. And I sell them for $2. So I'm making a dollar ninety-five each. Yeah. So it's not bad, you know? Yeah. Um, I love markets are a lot of fun, and... and I highly recommend them for new artists trying to get out there, because it also means you're interacting with your local community. And the more you interact with your local community, the stronger base of repetitive customers you get. Like, I know there are people who come to my table because it's my table. No, so, that's Which lovely. is really cool. Yeah. Well, yeah, and I had one fan who discovered my YouTube channel and then sculpted a warrior cat's character out of Sculpey for me and brought oh, it to me the next day. I love that. I know, the kid was like nine years old. It was so cute. I think it was Mole Whisker. Oh, that's precious. Yeah, I still have it because I, I can't. It's just so cute. Um, and so yeah, you get precious moments like that, and when you are interacting with people in person and they're appreciating your art, it feels a lot better than numbers on a screen. Oh, ha boy howdy. Um, I miss Artist Alleys. They're so fun. I know. I have one coming up in April that I'm doing. It's a local convention called Covacon, um, and I'm really excited to do it. Nice! And that is where I'm actually supporting my friend of who is coming over to do uh, his own small amount of product stuff. He does dice! Ooh. Which is really exciting, and at some point I'd love to do a shout-out on my channel for him, but this is not quite the stream for it, but down the pipeline I will definitely be advertising, or at least co-sharing some of his, his links and, and stuff, so you guys can go check them out. Heck yeah. Oh, Showtune Cocktoo says, which, where, which con? Are you asking Galaxy what con they're going to uh, upcoming? Mine is on uh, in BC. It's called Covacon. Nice. Which is hilarious because it sounds like COVID, but it is really not about COVID. <laughs> <laughs> it's just the name of the location. <laughs> so, um, but I, again, it's not a big convention, so. Gotcha. When I eventually want to do um, Anime Expo in, or Anime Revo, I should say specifically, in Vancouver. Cool. What? That's a big one. The cost of a table at Anime Re uh, Revo last time I looked was like $600. Woo! Yeah. Mind you, this is a convention that usually gets like over 20,000 people. So... So probably you worth. know what I mean. Like, <laughs> that's the other thing is, is uh, oh, I thought you said the name of an Atlanta con. No, unfortunately, I'm a dirty Canadian. I hide up in my snow. Um, oh, are you talking about <laughs> Anime Expo in Atlanta, Showtune? Because I've I, I've been at that convention. I've sold at that convention really? before. 
like a long time ago and it was hilarious. It was like the worst one I ever sold at. <laughs> Well, and that's the thing is, is I was watching a video talking about, like, even though you could go to a really popular convention, you could sell nothing because people aren't there for the artist's alley necessarily. They're there for the talent that visits, like, if it well, was David Tennant, for example, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. they're not going to go to the artist alley. They're going to want to spend their money getting a signature and photo from the talent. Well, it depends. A lot of uh, anime conventions... Like, folks do come for the Artist Alley. I go for the Artist Alley, and many do. So yeah. I actually sold really well. That particular convention was the worst, though, because no one came to the convention at all. Really? There was a double booking, and there had they had accidentally scheduled the smaller anime convention, the one I was selling at, the same weekend as, like, the Atlanta City Comic Con. Oh. Like, the massive one across town. And That's so no... Awful. like. 10, probably 10 people total at the entire convention. Like, it was just us in the artist alley hanging out all day. There was like 10 oh, of us there. Awful. And we just hung out and watched anime all day and it ended up being really fun, but none of us sold anything because there was no one. Well, hopefully you didn't pay too much for the table because I know tables can range from like $40 to like, well, as I mentioned, 600 right? So It definitely wasn't 600 I think it <laughs> might have been like like it was, it was a, losing a little bit of money, but it's okay. Yeah. It was yeah. also well, really I... funny because after, at the end of the first day, the like con organizers were hanging out talking to us, and they mentioned that they weren't able to get a hotel room, and we weren't. Oh no, that was a different convention. Never mind. I was oh, sorry. I got mind. I got my conventions mixed up. Yeah. It was at a different convention that the con organizers were having trouble finding a. Uh, hotel room and it was closer to where we lived at the time uh -huh. and so like my mom who helps who helped me table back in the day was just like hop in your car and follow us she can sleep on our couch and so we just like showed up home so with a cute. couple of anime con strays oh my god that's amazing just adopted them it was fabulous oh, i would love to do the bigger convention my worry however is a my service dog isn't ready yet I haven't, mm -hmm. we haven't, we're, we're still waiting on, on, um, some things. And B, um, it's the location. I'm on an island, so getting off to the mainland and having a hotel and then paying for a table and the cost of producing merch. Yeah. Um, like, that's, that's the difficult thing with con hopping, with convention hopping, I should say. Is, is that, like, the really good cons that are worth selling at can be a distance away if you're not in the city. It's true. It's true. Yeah. So. But it is exciting. And it's definitely worth it. Yeah. Anywho, on that note, it's 1045 and I'd like to get uh, ready for something else that's happening today. So, I have loved our stream. We're going to do another one eventually. Um... You know, and hopefully when I'm not as busy, and I think it would be awesome. Heck yeah. Enjoy the rest of the stream with Rook. Make sure to bully Rook a little bit for using uh, uh, Storyboard Pro for animation, guys. Yep. It's your it's your civic duty. <laughs> it's your civic duty to bully Rook now. Um, <laughs> do it in my stead, everyone, because I'll be hanging up now. <laughs> See you, right. Galaxy. Love y'all. Have a good one. I like that, like, Galaxy's little avatar just automatically disappears from my screen when Galaxy signs off. Like, that's- it's such a nifty little tool. It's so nice. But yeah, I'll keep hanging out to just to finish this design and one more that I need to get done. And then we'll call it a day. Yeah, I don't know if I'll table at a- at a convention again. Like, it's a lot of fun. Um... But I haven't kept up on, like, the current animes to know what merch to make, and... I guess I could sell Warrior Cat stuff, but I've noticed that the, like, the Venn diagram of anime con enjoyers and Warrior Cat enjoyers, it does overlap, but not a huge amount. Yes, yeah, <laughs> Streamer. I like that all my friends are here! My friend Dreamer, my friend Pix. Pix, me and Dreamer go way back.
a little basil paws squishy sweet you know i have considered selling at furry cons i haven't ever been to a furry con though but i do admire the furries very much i admire their hard-working ethics and uh artistry in their costumes and I think that the overlap with Warrior Cat content would definitely overlap more with the furries. That's true, I should stream more. Would y'all be interested in more, like, just drawing streams while I work on stuff? Like this, like character designs and whatnot? Let's get basil paws designs. Aw, oh, no worries, Togore. Or Togor. Tugor? Pix, you and I should do a joint stream together sometime. <laughs> I need to make you a, a PNG tuber so you can show up in the corner and chat too. Oh, he doesn't have eyebrows, does he? Forgot that. There you go, buddy. That's better. Togor. No, I'll have to do more more art streams. It's nice. Just working on stuff. I think I might change Basil Paw's uh, white fur to be a little bit of a more golden hue instead of a... Instead of a bluer one. Let's see. There we go. Nice and warm. And that looks lovely with his orange spots. Which, how do those look compared to his mom's? They're a little bit brighter, which I like. There we go. I want that to be brighter so that he stands up. Oh, did my... Oh, that's weird. You're right, my little character has vanished. One second. Let me solve that for y'all. Oh, it's because I'm not in a voice call on Discord anymore. That's why. It really needs me to be in a voice call. Here, one sec. <laughs> okay, now I'm back. Hopefully that'll work. Hi, Strawberry Lemonade. If it goes away again, then that's fine. Um, this particular tool really works best when in a call. So I do need, like, a partner to be in call with. with. But... I'm hoping to have Galaxy just support the call, but not need to hop back in. So Galaxy can go about their beautiful day.
Let's see, do I give him the back sock on both legs? Mm, I kind of like it without the back sock, but I might just give him some orange toes back there. Good night, Pix! No, I don't look at like how that looks. Maybe I can just give one toe and that will work. That works, I think. Just so there's a tiny spot of orange balancing out on that other leg. What a cutie! It looks like he's got like a dark nose, so I think I'm gonna give him a slightly lighter colored nose color as to his mom. Oh, that's cute. What a cutie. Little basil paw. He's actually a medicine cat apprentice. Oh, that reminds me. I should grab... Let me grab a flicker coral, because I need to make sure his colors look fine sitting next to her so that since they will have scenes together okay his orange is pretty close to hers but is a little I can make it a little bit lighter Maybe a little bit redder. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, that's nice. That's different enough. And that's a very cute color for his orange. Oh, my name's Rook Rusty, and Togor... Oh, looks like my character disappeared again. You're right that I would, in the technical sense, be a furry in the sense that I have a fursona. I say furry, I'm not a furry, mostly because I would say... Like, there's two ver definitions of furry I would think of, which is like... There's furry, lowercase, which is just someone who likes anthropomorphic animals, which I do. So I would count myself as like this kind of a furry just because I do like drawing anthropomorphic animals, although mostly I draw normal animals. And my character is a fursona. Yeah, my character did go away. Um, Dreamer, do you mind if I call you in Discord and you just don't answer the phone so that my character can work? Since I know we're pals on Discord. I'll figure out a better fix for the future, um, but just as a momentary fix. Um, but as for furries, then there's also furry, capital F, which I would qualify as someone who like engages with the furry fandom. You know, like a person who that's their community and they go to furry conventions, they get a fursuit. Like, there's a culture to that that I don't partake in, but I admire. So I would say that I'm a lowercase furry, but since I'm not really someone who hangs out in the furry fandom, nor, have, nor really has an interest in it except as an outside observer, then I th that's, that's how I would qualify that. The thing is that lots of people would be technically lowercase furries just for enjoying anthropomorphic animal characters, since that's like the majority of Disney. <laughs> okay, let me pull up here. Okay, there we go. Thanks, Dreamer. I appreciate you ignoring me. Now, I will say, like, if I had all the money in the world, yes, I would love to get a fursuit. 
Not to wear to furry conventions, although I probably would look up furry conventions at that point, just so I would have a place to wear it. But like, I don't know. I like weighted blankets. I feel like it would do a similar thing. Because <laughs> I did have a, a full body Dragonite costume back in the day that I went to anime conventions in, and I really enjoyed running around as a Dragonite. I appreciate that, Butter. I actually do have... Oh, maybe, Dreamer, could you maybe, like, hop in the call and then mute yourself? Just so that that might work? I mean, it might show Galaxy on the screen, but I think that'd be okay. Oh, no, wait, it won't show Galaxy on the stream because Galaxy wouldn't be here and it's tied to accounts. As for, I do actually have a Boon AU server for the, to, like, share the Boon AU projects as they develop and stuff that I used for the Next Up Forever uh, project. But it's currently not open right now. It's just, it's a lot of work to organize and maintain a server. And I would much rather spend that time and effort um, actually storyboarding and drawing and making art, you know? Do I have a server where I have power to make a private voice chat for myself? I guess I do, but the current service I'm using for the- the tool I'm using for the VC- the PNG tuber really is meant for calls, not for voice chat, I don't think. Wait, no, it would work for voice chat. Hmm. Let me see if I can do that. One sec. Well, for now, I'm not going to be streaming terribly longer. Is it okay if I just hang out in your- in your muted call, Dreamer, for now? If you want me to hop out, I can hop out and find a voice- a private voice chat I can do somewhere. <laughs> Thanks. But that's a good idea for future reference. Is I might do, like, a voice chat- a private one with just Galaxy and I for our stream so that we can be in calls like this. Yeah! It's a good idea. I admire fursuits so much. Like, there's some artistry there that is just incredible. Oh, his little eyes. They're so cute. Can I make him a little bit lighter? Hi, tiny sweet bunny. I also appreciate like the fursuit makers because they be making bank on those costumes and it is hard work to design and make. Like, holy cow. Oh, I believe in you, Togor. You, sh you can get writing done. Sorry for distracting you. <laughs> oh, little Basil Pond is family. So cute. And that looks lovely to me. a fursuit dreamer? That's awesome! Oh, 
thanks, Tiny. That's so sweet. I'm glad you liked Mesrook back in the day. That was such a fun project to make. I'm actually going to... Yeah, let's do that for front and back paws. Let's scooch him over here. Yeah, you should send you should send me pictures, Dreamer. See, I've been trying to convince my mom for years because my mom's a costume designer um, and does a lot of that sort of thing. And I'm like, yo, you got to start doing the convention circuit and making fursuits. You would make so much money because my mom could make some dang good uh, fursuits if she wanted. I also had friends on the anime convention circuit who would also do the um the furry circuit. So we got we had fun swapping stories and stuff. Aw, thanks, Butter. Aw, Tiny Sweet, I love that. That's wonderful. Oh, I'm glad you like it, Strawberry Lemonade. And you're making your own comics now? That's fabulous. Are you posting them anywhere? I'd love to, re to read them. I love Warrior Cat comics. And aw, thanks, Dreamer. It's amazing how my silly little Pokemon comic had such an impact on folks. Ooh, PMD? I love Pokemon Mystery Dungeon comics. Wait! Wait! Tiny Sweet Bunny! I know you! I read your comics! Holy frick! 
Holy frick! What? Let me... I'm like, wait! A Pokemon Mystery Dungeon comic? And a, and a comic called Pipe Up? That sounds familiar! That sounds like something I currently follow. Are you Salt and Pepper Bunny? That's crazy! I've been following your work for years! I like absolutely loved uh Oh what was T I'm brain farting. I'm brain farting. What was the comic called? The one with the with the with the the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon one with the with the kids. That was so good. I am brain farting so hard. Because it ended a little while back, I guess. Little lapses. Oh, you're not salt and pepper? Oh, you're collabing with salt and pepper. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, I'm really enjoying Pipe Up so far. I gotta, I gotta, I'm sure that you're linked under Pipe Up. I gotta go follow you on DeviantArt. One sec. Her, her, her. Small world indeed. And yes, I loved Little Lapses. Pipe Up, Pipe Up. I'm scrolling through my feed to the last Pipe Up page. See if you're in the description. <laughs> ah, here it is. Oh, yep, there you are. I recognize your character. You do the inks and character flats, tiny sweet bunny. Oh, heck. Oh, come on. It's not going to let me follow you from the app. That's annoying. One second. Uh, let me pull you up on a browser. Welcome back, Sophie. But yeah, I'm so excited to see more pipe up. I'm loving it so far. But yeah, everyone, you should read Pipe Up if you haven't yet. Oh, it's so hard to navigate things. On Discord these days, I'm still like so fond of di of of DeviantArt. I meant DeviantArt. So hard to navigate on DeviantArt. I hate all the changes they've made, and I mostly just like haunt it to read comics and stuff. But and followed. Hey hey hey. I'm gonna have to check out the rest of your comics. Very cool. Sorry for mistaking you for salt and pepper bunny. <laughs> but I'm very excited to have even more new comics to read now. Woohoo! I am a ghost haunting the ruins of DeviantArt. <laughs> oh, at any point, Dreamer, if you need to hop off the stream, let me know and I can solve that issue with my PNG tuber. But thank you again for, for helping. Oh, I love you. Alright, and there's Basil Paw's butt. Gotta have the butt reference, of course. Oh, I forgot to do his little mouth. Give me your mouth, buddy. So sweet. OK. 
Okay, we got that color. And we got his orange, his gray, and then really just his eye color. He's a very simple design. We'll love that for him. There's Basil Paw. How wonderful. Oh, exciting, Sophie. All right, got that whole family done. Now time for this family with, with Vixen Kit's uh, very traumatized mom. Bless. I have a general idea of what I want for her mom. But I think I'm going to adjust it. Let's see, here's her design. She's got a very beautiful design. <laughs> you do get the little uh, uh, preview for what I'm going to say. That's funny. got these gray stripes and she's got these orange patches with orange stripes. Very lovely torty design. So I want to give her the same sort of um, deer shaped ears. Let's see. exciting tiny sweet Understandable. Cockatoo, are you part of Warrior Cats Animated? What are you doing on it? I love everything I've seen coming out for it. everything else of this design works well enough for the inking. She is very sad. 
baby pounce in Fox Tide. You'll get more story info from the video we're eventually gonna make in the comic, but baby pounce was a very was a, t a mother too young, so she gave her baby to Fox Clan to take care of, and then when she came back for her later, discovered that her baby had tragically died. So she ends up joining the the clan to. Um, live up to her daughter's dream of becoming a warrior. It's very sad. No, oh, dang, y'all did a watch party for Next Up Forever? That's so great! Oh, I love that! I'm so honored! I'm so happy with how Next Up Forever turned out. Like, I can't- there's so much in it that's so amazing that I can't believe it turned out as good as it did. We had such a good team. And Strawberry Lemonade, what is the plot of your comic that you need a name for? Maybe we can help you brainstorm. Do you have a main character uh, with a name, Strawberry? Thank you for being summoned. Long time no see. And hey, mouse on the piano. Ooh, Moontail. 
Could you name your comic after Moontail? Like Moontail's Quest or something like that? <laughs> Classic naming convention. is a great name. There she is, baby pounds. We did talk about Nozrick a little bit earlier and about uh, Tiny Sweet Bunny's Pokemon Mystery Dungeon comics. Classic warrior cat name of character's quest or mission. It makes it sound like a super edition. You could also swap out quest for something that's more like specific to the events of the story, like Moontail's River or something like that, since it's River Clan. Yeah, True was involved in Nuzric's son back in the day. That was such an ambitious project. I wish we could have gotten more done on it, but I defi we definitely needed deadlines and for it to be paid, maybe. But I'm so proud of the work we did. That was a lovely time. Good old Rook's Army. Okay, let's see. So we'll start with a base of her colors here. That's a pretty dark but color, but I, I honestly really like it. Especially, well, she's about the same. Maybe I can make it a little darker even. Ooh, Moontail in the Lost River is a very cool sounding name. I like that. Like, how do you lose a river? People will be like, what? How was the river lost? We must read this comic to find out. And then they read it. And then they love it. Really? You're working on Pipe Up 2, Egg? That's wonderful. I'm very much enjoying it. I was telling Tiny Sweet earlier. <laughs> I try to put as much of it as I can on my resume. It is funny how often I accidentally end up leading teams of th for things. Like, I'm like, oh man, I'll just make a, a Pokemon comic. Oh wow, now I'm leading a whole team and creating a Pokemon comic. Oh, I think I'll just join some Warrior Cats projects for fun. Oh, now I've written an entire AU and I'm leading a team of 150 people to work on it. Wow. <laughs> 
It, it's always by accident. I mean, not really by accident, but I just get cool ideas and I get so excited. And then all of a sudden, I'm in charge of things. Yeah, she's got that little spot on her chest that then the stripes point towards. It does happen. I'm just accidentally too cool. Well, I'm just so appreciative over the years for how much love and interest people have had in my little projects and ideas. They're the real MVPs. Let's see, it looks like it goes down half of her face. So let's have it be here and across the nose. And around the edge of that eye. And does it go? It goes under the eyes actually, so let's do. Aw, thank you. And thanks, yeah, like. It definitely did complete way faster than I expected, too. It helped that we had a good update schedule and, like, good deadlines and stuff. And pe we had some awesome people just, like, helping out with all sorts of different parts. That helped, too. For the cameos for the Star Clan part, let me double check. Because I believe it was. It was 50 something. It might have been exactly 50, I can't remember. I would have to look up my tracking documents. But yeah, it was a lot of people. And I was so impressed with how the final version turned out. It turned out like what, better than my wildest dreams. Yeah, Next Up Forever was a, was a multi-animator project. It's on my uh, channel, if you want to give it a watch. Okay. She gets a scar on her at some point, but I can't remember when or where, so I'm just going to leave it off for now. Let's see, she has a foot... A sock on her foot right here. And then she does have some on her back. She has like a, a bit here. And then also some on her back too. We should just have it. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Let's have just a floating spot on her back like that. Or maybe. Hmm. 
Oh, as, as for that tiny sweet, um, it really depends. It's less of a game and more of like, I treat it like a story building tool. It's just, you know, you can use it to come up with fun ideas for stories. Um, one way that I make it more fun is I play it together with Galaxy. So we, but we'll, we'll play two concurrent games at the same time and pretend that like they are neighboring clans. So anytime someone joins my clan that has the history of used to be in a rival clan, that means Galaxy has to exile one of their cats. And then that character is now my clan. So that's a fun challenge that we do is those sort of concurrent ones. There's also fun challenges like the loner challenge where you kill off all of the characters except one or two and have them rebuild the clan over time. You could also do, I've seen challenges where you like make all of the cats medicine cats or all of the cats mediators. Um, I've been looking into more fun challenges myself to try and come up with fun ideas for me in Galaxy's Clan Gen streams. But the, at, pl at least playing together with a friend makes it a lot more fun and interesting. Because then you can come up with stuff like, Oh, what if these characters were cross-clan lovers? And stuff like that. Also, what do y'all think for, for Baby Pounce? Like, should her back spot go all the way to her tail, or should it just be behind the shoulder? I kind of like it without it, actually, and I wonder if I can just do something small behind the... directly behind the shoulders, just to balance it out. And I might give this foot a little ring towards the base. Maybe? No. All the shapes just feel very samey. There isn't a lot of variation. That's a fun idea though, Togar. Oh, there we go. I like that. That looks nice. I forgot her toe right there. There we go. I'll leave that color there for now. Just by the shoulder. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea, Tiny Sweet. I didn't. I know I wanted to break up the orange with additional uh, darker stripes, but breaking up the colors themselves is an excellent idea. Cause then I could do that foot be that color. Oh, that's nice. And then if I went like this, the tip of that. Here, and then I could even nah. I think that spot right there will just unless I want to in something like this. Oh, that's right. Her eyebrows are different. There, there we go. See it, true. Oh, is that just not touching very barely? There we go.
Now I think I like those shapes, but I think they need to be this color. Yeah, there we go. Dreamer, if you want me to hop off the voice call, I can, and I can find a private vo voice chat to be in. Aw, thank you. I appreciate your help. Oh, come on, Storyboard Pro. I know there's a lot happening in you right now, but don't crash. Hang in there. There we go. Okay, and then I want a darker color here. So I want her stripes to feel a similar shape to her babies. she does need something with this color on here maybe she needs oh that's nice I like that that's a good shape Okay, and then she's got... So this particular clan gen story is going to be... It's mostly for fun, but it is also for content. We're going to... Me and Galaxy are going to adapt this story into a comic that's going to be coming out in the future. We have a lot of prep work to do first. But I'm also going to do like some podcasty story time videos that will have the whole story put together. I think it'll be a lot of fun. And then she's got like some stripes that go there to point to her chest mark. Oh, that's good. Like she's wearing a little collar. Honestly, Tiny Sweet, you are not missing much with it. Like, I love the books with all my heart and soul, and they are not super well written. But they are fun. They are very fun. And the fact that they keep reading, writing more and more of them is impressive. So they've got their, they've got their charms, but you're also not missing on much if you don't read them. <laughs> yeah, there's like 40, 40 Warrior Cats book. It's the, it's the soap opera of the youth chapter book genre. There's so many.
And we're going to give her the same broken heart mark as her daughter. Maybe not. It makes her look bald with the lighter colors. Let's see, there's six books in each series. There's the Firestar one, the Brambleclaw one, the Power of Three, the Omen of the Stars. After that, there's the one with, with Darktail, I think, and then there's the one with the fighting... No, after Omen of the Stars, it was the Dovewing one. And, or no, that was Omen of the Stars? Yeah, that was Omen of the Stars. But then there's the one where they fight Heaven and Hell at the end. And then there's the one where uh, Darktail happens. And then there's the one where uh, the one incel takes over Hell. And then there's the one that's in the distant past. And then there's the current one. So there's like nine active series. Or like nine series of the main series that have six books in each. And then there's also a whole bunch of standalone novels and novellas. So nine times six. Um, nine times six. 54 of the main series alone. And then there's like a lot of the super editions. Yeah. It's massive. And the great thing about that though is there is so much content in these books that it's very fun sandbox to play in for things like AUs. Mm, I don't like those head stripes, but I'm not sure what I would want in place of them. Maybe like two eye spots higher up? Oh yeah, I like that. Let's do a better shape. Like they're not on the eyebrow, they're above the eyebrow, but still. Mmm. Nah. Right? Sandboxing and canon stuff is so fun. That's been, the the whole Boon AU thing has been really fun because the, the, the whole game of the Boon AU is I have to stay relatively loyal to the canon as if I'm like re doing speculative histor historical fiction. So if a cat exists, it has to be either someone who never existed or someone who definitely existed. And I have to justify one new character's existence and be like, actually, in canon, they were over here, or they were over here. It's a lot of fun. I've also heard of Wings of Fire, but I have not read it. I kind of like baby pounce without the the spots farther up on her eyes i think it i think just having her forehead be that dark color i think works with then you know the cheek ruffle spot And we're going to mirror some of the shapes of her other stripes to make it easier for consistency later. See ya, cockatoo! 
Oh yeah, there's no J Feather uh, in the Boon AU, and that's because uh, Brambleclaw and Squirrel Flight, or actually, no, the relevant parties, J Feather doesn't exist because Leaf Pool doesn't exist, and that's because Fireheart never meets Sandstorm, because Fireheart goes off to become a street cat instead of becoming a forest cat. So. No, no Jay Feather, no Holly Leaf or Lion Blaze, no Spark Pelt or Alder Heart, um, no, no Tiger Heart point two. Uh, hilariously enough, though, Dove Wing and Ivy Pool do exist in the Boon AU. They still happen. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to explore, like, butterfly effect and whatnot. But then Cloudtail doesn't exist in that sense. So here, here is how, because originally I didn't think that Dovewing and Ivy Pool would exist, but then to my shock they do, and this is why. So here's here's your butterfly effect. Fireheart never joins the clans. He is chased away by Tiger Claw instead of meeting Graypaw. Um. He then, you know, goes on to the whole stuff in Fire Clan that's in Mixed Up Forever. Because Fireheart is not in the clans, Princess never gives away Baby Cloud to become a warrior. So he stays a kitty pet. And he's actually purchased by someone and becomes their kitty pet. Now backtrack. Um, the other change in the Boon AU, like Fireheart was chased Rusty was chased away by Tiger Claw, but also Tiny, Scourge, when Tiny goes into the woods, he isn't chased away by Tiger Paw. Instead, he meets Sunstar, and Sunstar takes him to Pine to raise, which that'll be in a different video. So, so that's how, that's the beginning of how Tiny ends up becoming a warrior cat, Tiny Frost. But because of that, Blood Clan never happened. So there was no Blood Clan in the city, which means Barley, the, the barn cat, Barley never became the barn cat because he had no reason to flee the city because Blood Clan wasn't there terrorizing them. So Barley stays in the fort, in the city. Sunstar was the leader before Blue Star was. This is this is all like look up it up in the Warriors Wiki stuff. It's hilarious. Um, <laughs> that's funny, tiny. So anyway, so because Barley never had to run away from the forest, the barn where Barley lives in Canon becomes overrun with mice, and the farmer decides he needs a barn cat to take care of the mice problem. So he purchases a kitten to be his barn cat, and that kitten is Baby Cloudtail. So he names him Wooly, and Wooly grows up as a barn cat hunting mice in the barn, and takes Barley's kind of place narratively there. So, in order to have Ivy Pool and Dovewing, you have to have Cloudtail and Brightheart heart end up together. So how does that happen? Well, let me direct you further ahead in the canon. This is a very long, like, uh, butterfly effect, and it's fantastic. 
So, in canon, um, Graystripe is kidnapped by two legs when the forest clans are leaving the forest. Remember that? It's in the manga, and that's that whole thing happened. Well, when Graystripe was kidnapped by two legs, canonically, in the actual books, what happened was Graystripe was leading a patrol to rescue a group of cats who had already been captured by two legs, including Brightheart, which was like a whole thing. Um, but in the Boon AU, Graystripe is actually dead by that point because way earlier on in like book two of the series, because Fireheart is not friends with Graystripe and Tiny Frost is the warrior that's in Fire Clan or in Thunder Clan. Tiny Frost sees Graystripe going to meet Silverstream, you know, in their little whole love affair deal. And he, because he's not Fireheart, and he's a real law-abiding cat, because, you know, he's like that, he reports Graystripe to Blue Star, and Graystripe ends up getting exiled and joins River Clan. Which Blue Star does that co somewhat compassionately because she sees herself in Graystripe and is like, just go frickin' be with your lover. Don't stick around here. But it's still very sad for Graystar. So Graystripe is in River Clan, which means he's there during the whole takeover by Tiger Star, and Tiger Star tries to have him and his two kits, Featherpaw and Stormpaw, executed. So instead of Stonefur dying, protecting Featherpaw and Stormpaw, instead it's Graystripe who dies protecting Featherpaw and Stormpaw while his kits and Silverstream flee River Clan to um to Thunder Clan, which they end up going back to River Clan, but Graystripe dies instead of Stonefur. So that means Graystripe is not there to save the cats who are captured by the two legs during the evacuation of the forest. Yes, it's very sad for, for Graystripe, but he looks after, he looks, oh, he watches out for his kids and Silverstream. I reversed their roles. I did it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Graystripe is the motivating wife from beyond the grave. Because there's too many dead wives that are Star Clan motivators in Warrior Cats. We needed some dead husbands. Um. <laughs> so anyway, back to the evacuation of the forest during its destruction. A group of cats is captured by two legs. Graystripe is not there to lead the patrol to rescue them. So the patrol goes awry and things turn out differently. And the cats who were originally taken by the two legs canonically are still taken. So that so instead of just Graystripe being lost from the clans and having to go on that whole adventure to find the clans again, it is actually a whole group of cats who, get this, this is the canonical lineup of cats who were stolen at that time period if they had never been rescued. We've got Mistyfoot, we've got Sorreltail, and we have Brightheart, as well as some others from other clans. And I also threw in Brackenfur also gets taken because he's trying to rescue Sorreltail. So all of those cats, including Brightheart, get distributed out to two-leg homes and are lost. Mistyfoot meets Millie and they become friends and Millie helps her find the other lost warriors and they all group together and team up to go on a cross-country adventure to find the clans after they were lost. So instead of Graystripe on this adventure, it's a whole group of cats. So on this adventure, they finally like find their way back to the old forest territories. And of course, all the clans are gone, devastating. But who offers them a place to stay while they regroup? Wooly in the barn, Cloudtail in the barn offers the last warriors a chance to stay in the, in the barn. Also, thank you, Tiny Sweet. Um, so that is how Brightheart and Cloudtail in the Boon AU meet. Is it's actually Bright Song, which is her AU name, and Wooly. And so they spend a month in the barn regrouping, as well as um, 
some other things that happened that required them to, to hang out for a month before setting out on the road again. And during that month, Brightheart and Cloudtail fall in love um, and end up having to break it off because Wooly wants to stay a barn cat and Brightheart wants to continue on to the clans. It's very sad. But what they don't realize is that when they leave, Bright Song is pregnant with White Paw, or, you know, White Wing as a baby. And after they leave, after they've been gone for a while, Wooly just can't get Brightheart out of his head and he ends up deciding to go find her. So he goes on a separate cross-country journey to try to find the clans in order to find Brightheart again. And it's very romantic. But because of all that, the, that, the group of lost warriors find their way back to the clans. Brightheart has her baby, White Kit. And then later, when White Kit is an apprentice, Wooly shows up looking for them and ends up joining Sunder Clan to be with them and gets the warrior name Wooly Cloud. So that's how White Wing was born, although her name in the Bune Yu is White Blossom. And because White Blossom was born, that means she could have her daughters, Dovewing and Ivy Pool. And that's why they exist in the Bune Yu when no one else does. <laughs> Boom. I did see that someone asked about Ravenpaw. And Ravenpaw actually become never leaves ThunderClan. Um, at least not at that point. And he becomes the medicine cat after Spotted Leaf dies. And his warrior his medicine cat name is Raven Whisker. But he does end up leaving ThunderClan eventually when the clans leave the forest territories because he falls in love with Barley in Fire Clan and stays behind in Fire Clan instead of going with the clans to their new home. So the ship does sail. You're welcome. <laughs> but yes, I have thought out very much a lot and it makes for some very cool stories farther down the line in the Boon AU canon, which I'm hoping to explore with videos and things like that and storyboards, because I've got great songs in mind, um, especially with Dovewing, who Dovewing's warrior name becomes Dove Whisper in this AU, and Ivy Pools is Ivy Tail, and Dove Whisper actually has the ability to see ghosts instead of hearing long distances, and it makes sense because she inherited the ability. Everything has a reason. Let's see, those eyes look nice, but they're a little too bright and saturated, I think. Yeah. Thank you. I wanted to still, like, keep the, the vibes of canon warrior cat stories. I think the biggest difference is that in the Boon AU there's just way less forbidden romance I discovered, which was more just a personal preference and I didn't I did it without even realizing that I wasn't really making a lot of forbidden romances happen, which is kind of funny. But there's all sorts of the normal stuff like ghost possession and wars and you know crazy uh political shenanigans. Let's give her the same color as her baby's nose and ears. Oh yeah, the pink really ties that together. Pet rats are lovely. I love that your pet rat's name is Barley. Let's see, does Baby Pounce need anything else? I think she looks pretty dang good. I do need to do her flip-flop side, unfortunately, so let me duplicate these layers.
I do make Tiger Star way more of a of a of a threat in the Boon AU though. Cuz I feel like Tiger Star was fine, but he was kind of hyped up to be the biggest baddest villain of the Warrior Cat series, but then he kind of just stopped being it cuz he just died and then super died. And I feel like the story keeps going. Oh, what happened to Tiger Star after the war? That's a whole story. And it's very cool, and I will get into it. So, Tiger Star. Hmm, how am I gonna. Shit. Prison. Oh, I'll set these up. Let's do that so they can be a little bit bigger. Because her darn tail's too long. And I don't want to crop it, and I don't want her to be so small, though. I think that'll have to do. Unless, yeah, I can get a little bit closer that way. So, Tiger Star, after the war, he is not killed by fires by Boon Star, as you see in the video next up forever. So he lives, and he starts plotting against the clans and plotting his revenge. He very much wants to destroy the, you know, take over the clan still. But there's something important you have to know about Tiger Star in the in the Boon AU. That's a little that's that's not clear just from Next Up Forever. It's hinted at, but you don't know it yet. So, in canon, how does Tiger Star get his nine lives? How does he become a leader? We all know this. I know this. It's that he goes to Shadow Clan and after Nightstar dies, he becomes leader, and he gets nine lives. He does this because Nightstar only had one life. He didn't get nine lives. And this is because at the beginning of the story, Broken Star, the previous leader, was exiled from Shadow Clan, but had not lost all of his nine lives yet. So when T Nightstar goes to Star Clan, they're like, Sorry, buddy, we already gave those lives to Broken Star and he still technically has them. What does this tell us? It tells us that Star Clan is bound by certain rules. That whoever has the nine lives given from Star Clan, those aren't taken away even if that character becomes evil. And that they can't be taken away by Star Clan to give them to a new cat who's becoming leader. You can only have the same amount of lives given. So we also see that with like Sunstar and Pinestar. When Pinestar left the clan, Sunstar only got eight lives because Pinestar still had one left that he kept with him when he went to become a kitty pet. So there is a finite amount of lives that can be given by Star Clan at any given time to the, one of the four leaders of the clans. This becomes important. So. That's why Tiger Star becomes leader in canon. In the Boon AU, Broken Star is actually murdered by Red Tail pretty early on. In Book 1, instead of taking Broken Star prisoner, Yellow Fang isn't there to be like, please take him prisoner, don't kill him. Plus, Red Tail is alive and he wants vengeance for his sister, who was killed on Broken Star's orders. Oh, hi, Nobeek. I'm just telling some Boon AU story stuff while I work on this character design. So let's see, where was I? Oh yes, yeah, so Broken Star is actually killed really early on by Redtail in a in a revenge for his sister deal. So he loses all of his nine lives, which means Night Star, the elder in Shadow Clan, becomes the full leader of Shadow Clan with nine lives. So this is important. Later when Nightstar canonically was supposed to have died during a plague, you know, in Shadow Clan, he doesn't die because he has nine lives. He just loses a life. Now, Tiger's Claw does join Shadow Clan like he does in Canon, but it's a, it's a, a bit of a roundabout way. He ends up becoming briefly a, uh, living in a kitty pet's backyard after he's first exiled. <gasps> Galaxy! Yes. Um. So, but he ends up joining Shadow Clan for reasons. It's I won't get into it. The, at the time period, it's the same about time period when he joined before, but Nightstar doesn't die, so he can't become leader automatically. 
but the cats in shadow clan start talking that they want tiger claw to be leader because he's this cool strong cat and tiger claw wants power too but he but night star is still alive so what does he do he stages a coup and he takes over shadow clan but he doesn't kill night star and i'm actually going to have to get into the other stuff that i wasn't going to get into because it's important as to why so when tiger claw initially gets exiled from thunder clan going way back to the beginning he is exiled from thunder clan because Redtail's life is saved by Tiny Frost. And so Redtail can be like, hey, he tried to murder me. And Blue Star is like, that's bad. Get out of here. So when that happens, Tiger Claw is injured attacking Redtail. And so he want he leaves Thunder Clan and runs off injured and ends up collapsing under a bush in Sasha's backyard. Sasha the kitty pet, who is the mother of Hawk Frost and Tadpole and Mothwing in, in canon. So he and Sasha meet way earlier, and she ends up kind of like helping him recover and get back to his full strength, and they become friends and fall in love. So they end up going to Shadow Clan when Sasha's two legs die. And when Sasha becomes pregnant with Hawk, with Hawk Frost, Mothwing, and Tadpole. And so Tiger Claw is convinced to go back to the forest in order to get a medicine cat's help. And so he goes to Shadow Clan because he knows that they're weaker and has hopes that they'll like take pity on them. Which Nightstar does. He does take pity on them and let them join the clan so that Sasha can have her kids safely. So because of that, when Tiger Claw stages his coup, He's going to murder Nightstar in order to become leader of Shadow Clan, but Sasha pleads with him. She's like, "Don't kill Nightstar. He let let us join. He let me join when I was really vulnerable. Please spare his life." And because Tigerstar does love his wife, he agrees. So Nightstar is imprisoned, but this raises an interesting problem. Tiger Claw is now the ac yes, Tadpole is alive, and he does have a role later. Anyway, so. Nightstar is in prison. Tiger Claw is now the acting leader of Shadow Clan, but there's a problem. He doesn't have nine lives. He's not a full leader, but he can't kill Nightstar because that would make his wife sad. So what is how does Tiger Star get his nine lives to become fully Tiger Star? Well, he gets an idea, a sneaky little devious idea. So he starts trying. He starts building Tiger Clan. He makes a deal with River Clan to team up with them because Leopard Star still thinks he's cool. And he, and he tries to get Thunder Clan and Wind Clan to join him. And Tall Star and Red Star say no. And he's like, fine, but you'll you'll regret the consequences. So he stages an attack on Wind Clan. In canon, this this battle still happens. It's the battle where Gorsepaw. Fireheart's little apprentice buddy died and was killed by Tigerstar. Which Tigerstar doesn't kill Dor Gorsepaw because Fireheart doesn't exist in the clan, so he has no reason to. Um, but what he does do is he does kill the deputy. He kills Deadfoot. And then he takes one of Tallstar's last two lives. He kills T Tallstar. When Tallstar comes back, he has him like pinned down and basically tells him, okay, what you're going to do is before in front of your entire clan here on the battlefield, you're going to call off the battle and you're going to name me deputy of wind clan and agree to join tiger clan as part of like, you know, a show of good faith. You're going to join tiger clan, my big conglomerate clan, and you're going to, um, Make me your deputy to show that, like, I have a little bit of power in Wind Clan so that they'll listen to me and listen to Tiger Clan. And if you don't, I'm gonna kill this kit over here. So, what choice does Tallstar have? Um, I can see that, Rusty. That's fine. Um, so, anyway, Tiger, so Tiger Claw threatens Tallstar, says, make me your deputy publicly in front of all these cats here and before Star Clan, make me your deputy. And Tallstar has no choice but to agree. So he, he shouts out that he names Tiger Claw's deputy. And then immediately, Tiger Claw kills him. Which means 
because he was publicly declared deputy, Tiger Claw is now the technical leader of Wind Clan. Which means he goes to the Moonstone and gets nine lives, but they're Wind Clan's nine lives. Which Star Clan is not happy about. They do not like that he found a loophole and stole Wind Clan's lives. But what can they do about it? They have to. Um, I would prefer if you didn't, Rusty, in all honesty. Hi, Mouse. Or see ya, see ya, Mouse. I'm really hoping that you're being a goof and not actually hacking my stuff, because if you were, then we know who you are, and we would report you to YouTube. Um, I don't think you are, I think you're just being silly. Yeah, I'm gonna kick you, Rusty. That's not a nice joke to make. One sec. Do, do, do. How do I kick? How do I kick someone? Let's see, I can see put user in timeout, but I just want to kick them entirely. Well, I'll put user in timeout for now. That's fair. Anyway, back to Tiger Star stuff. So, Tiger Star is driven out of the forest after the war. Um, but he still has Wind Clan's nine lives. So as he's fleeing, he wanders around trying to figure out a plan to destroy, to take over the forest again, and he starts hanging out with some ro with some rogues. Um, and then he gets hit by a car, and the rogues freak out because this guy they just met got hit by a car. But then he comes back to life because he has nine lives, and they're like, "Holy crap! What are you? Are you some sort of like?" being some mystical being because you just died and came back to life and tiger star says yes i am a mystical being and you should all listen to what he says what i say so he ends up starting like for lack of a better word a cult but basically starting his own clan but with the cats worshiping him instead of star clan thinking that he's like some sort of like cryptid creature And he, acts, he ends up, like, leading that and trying to get build that up to be an army to attack the clans. But that's interrupted by um, some Wind Clan cats coming to invade his new clan. to Basically sent by Star Clan to murder Tiger Star to get their nine lives back. Um, because, see, the thing is, after Tiger Star is driven out, Night Star becomes leader of Shadow Clan again just normally he's still the technical leader of shadow clan but wind clan can't get a leader until tiger star is dead they can't get nine lives from star clan until tiger claw is gone so star clan ends up sending like an a uh, cat from wind clan on a super edition mission to assassinate tiger star and get wind clan's lives back so that happens and the like tiger star's little cult ends up getting destroyed and like, destroyed as in they realize he's not a god and stop following him. And he gets driven out of there too, but still alive. And he ends up wandering around trying to get more power in other places, but nothing ever pans out and works the way he wants it to. Um, until finally, um, I'm gonna just color over this with this. Until finally, Tiger Star, he slowly lo lost his lives one by one over time. Hi, Zia. As he's just surviving in the wilderness, trying to find a way to take over the clans again. 
and he's on his last life he's sick he's feverish and he wanders back to the old clan territories as he's dying because he wants to see it one last time and he starts hallucinating believing and he starts to remember his scam where he told them that he was a god and he starts hallucinating star clan talking to him star clan went through a lot of effort to try to stop Tiger Star from being a thing. Like they sent a warning to Goose Feather and when he was a baby, they sent a warning to Pine Star when he was a baby. They sent Tiny Frost, they sent Blue Star, like they have been thwarting him at every single turn. And he hates it. And fi and as he is like feverish and dying, Tiger Star has the thought that the only reason Star Clan must be trying so hard to stop him is if he actually is a god. And so he dies thinking that he's actually this, he's actually a god. And the thing about like warrior cat's logic is that sort of belief tends to have actual consequences. So Tiger Star dies in the forest, alone, sick, dying. And his bones lie rotting there for years until several years later, they are found by a cat. And Tiger Star's vengeful ghost that had been trapped in that location tied to those bones promises this cat power. It says, if you let me possess your body so I can have a body again, I will grant you the power to do whatever it is that you want to do, because I am this, this god. And the cat agrees, and so he is possessed by Tiger Star. And you know who that cat was? A.U. Soul! Bum, bum, bum. So, long story short, more stuff happens after that, obviously, where AU Soul goes to the clan territories and, like, starts Sky Clan there, and there's a whole body snatching plot where he uses Tiger Star's power to um, forcefully allow Dark Forest cats to body snatch living cats. And it's a whole thing, and it's very, it's, it's fun. I'm excited to, to do sh stuff about it eventually. <laughs> Pretty much Tiger, Fro Tiger Star is Ashfur from the Broken Code in this AU, and it's kind of my take on what, how I would do a body possession arc. Because, I mean, having it be Tiger Star, I think, is cooler in the get-go because he's a he's got a bit more stakes to him. And having him partially possess someone, I can explore a lot of the, like, back and forth internally between comparing Soul and Tiger Star's circumstances in this story. It's going to be some cool stuff. Okay, let's see, she's got that, yeah, that shape right there. Get those in there.
Hello, food twos. Yeah, I'm getting a little peckish. Once I finish Baby Pounce's design, that'll be the the end of stream, I think. Both because I'm hungry and because it's time. <laughs> Stream picnic. Okay, that's good. That's her reverse design done. So now I just gotta add a little paw. Let's just grab this one here as well. right back. I will be back in about three minutes and then I'll finish up this design and finish up stream. Woo! All right, I'm back. Marvelous. Okay, so for front paw,
Heck yeah, strawberry. Now the nice thing about Baby Pounce is that while she does have to deal with the grief of losing her daughter, she does eventually find true love. So she's got that going for her. Oh, you're right. I did switch up back in front. Thanks for the catch. Let me... There we go. Fixed. Jay-Z. That's the full color palette. All the designs are accurate. How does she look next to her baby? Oh, she looks great next to her baby. There's her baby. I am actually going to perform one kindness for when we eventually have to draw. This is a comic and I'm going to remove one of the extra the small stripes on, the, on her tail. There we go. And that is Baby Pounce down. Or done. <laughs> Alright, there are some other character designs I wanted to work on, but they might have to wait for a drawing stream on another day. Oh, that's wonderful, Strawberry. Like, I've got these guys that I all want to finish. So let me go to my list up at the start of the file and mark off. These are all the characters in Fox Tide that need designs. <laughs> and a lot are marked off the list, but there's a lot left to go. Give a little recap of what we got done in the stream today. Got to talk about a lot of fun stuff. 
hang out with Galaxy, talk about the animation industry and about uh, Foxtide and the Boon AU. Love it. And I got I was able to finish Vixen Kit, Wisteria Sight, Basil Paw, and Baby Pounce. I'm using Storyboard Pro from Toon Boom. And I use it for everything. I use it for animation, I use it for storyboarding, I use it for character design and illustration. Pretty much everything. It's really only meant to be used for storyboarding, but I, I like using it. <laughs> See ya, Togor! Yeah, I think it's the end of the stream, fellas. Sorry for those who just got here. Uh, unfortunate timing to arrive right at the end, but I will be doing more art streams in the future, so... Hope y'all have a wonderful day! Take care and bye!